Audiobook title, The Villainous is Summoned Back to Her Old World, 01-49. Date ruined edited 4 April 2023. In a nice sunny day two high school teens, a girl and a boy, are seen walking on the sidewalk holding hands. In their unoccupied hands they held an ice cream cone they bought from the ice cream shop. The girl got strawberry flavored ice cream while the boy got chocolate. Right now, they are on their way to a nearby park to enjoy their cold dessert on a bench and cuddle under the sunlight. Any onlookers could see that the teens make an attractive looking couple. The girl is petite at 5 feet 3 inches with golden brown hair, big blue eyes, and pouty lips. Her appearance is doll-like and she dresses stylishly while she carries a handbag. The boy next to her is tall and leanly muscled at 6 feet 1 inch, with longish black hair tied in a low ponytail and piercing grey eyes. He wore simple jeans and a pink Floyd t-shirt. He has the look of an unapproachable bad boy. The height difference made them look like a cute couple. I really enjoyed our date today. Exams are finally over, so I am glad that we can finally spend some time together said the girl with a bright smile. Me too. Exams have been keeping us occupied so I have been missing you a lot, said the boy. It was so sweet of you to take me out to watch a romantic comedy movie at the theatre even though it's not your type of genre. Anything for my girl. I love you Nick, the girl said lovingly, looking at the boy in the eyes affectionately. I love you Rose, the boy said back equal or more lovingly. The couple had stopped walking. The boy, Nick, bent his head and the girl, Rose stood on her tippy toes. They gave each other a kiss on the lips. As they pulled apart, a magic circle suddenly appears under their feet. The couple was caught by surprise and had no time to react before the magic circle sucked them in and then immediately closes. What was left on the spot where the couple just stood is the soiled ice cream cones on the sidewalk. It happened so quickly that other pedestrians did not see the two teens disappear. The magic circle reappears again in a throne room and pushes the teens out onto the floor. The teen lovers held each other tightly, shocked and bewildered. When Rose came to her senses after being disoriented, she was able to see her surroundings. She was again shocked to the core. Around her is the familiar throne room filled with nobles surrounding the two teens. There are a lot of faces she recognized. Among them in the sea of nobles are the faces she has never forgotten. In front of her view, a family of royalty sat on their thrones. There sat the king, the queen, and the two princes. These royalty she was also very much familiar with. By recognizing these people, many strong feelings welled up within Rose. Pain, sadness, anger, hate, betrayal. None of these feelings are positive at all. So with a very pissed off look, the innocent looking doll like girl opened her mouth and said her first words since coming out of the magic circle. What the actual fucking hell? An, new story. This will be an original work. I am not a professional writer so there will be mistakes and I only write stories for fun. I am still working on my other stories and I apologize for not updating consistently. Please tell me what you think of this chapter. Supposed to be dead edited the 4th of April 2023. What the actual fucking hell? Rose stood up suddenly from the floor with the support of her boyfriend. Her legs are shaking due to her anxiety. She looked at everyone around her again. I have just saw my old family members among those sea of nobles. Oh the look of their faces. Actually, everyone's faces have the same stupid expression. They definitely recognize me since I likely looked the same to them. She thought in contempt. Rose then settled her eyes to glare at the royal family with their gaping jaws. Ha. Huh. They look so stupid right now. One of the princes stood up abruptly from the throne. Rosalind, how are you alive? You are not supposed to be here standing before us. You are supposed to be dead. You were executed a month ago. Wow, it was only a month ago that I died? No wonder no one looked like they changed much, but I definitely did. I don't need to answer to the likes of you, William, Rose said coldly, but on the inside she is on a verge of panicking. WTF is she doing here? The prince, William, gave a shocked expression because Rose didn't address his title and also seeing her cold expression and hearing the contempt in her tone of voice. How dare you, the angry prince started to say. No, how dare you, Rose snapped, cutting him off. Why the hell are we summoned here? Take us back home right now, take us back this instant. She yelled out to no particular person and starts to hyperventilate. Nick who has broken out of his shock of being transported through some sort of magic that shatters his view of reality, 
immediately tries to calm his girlfriend. Babe, calm down, I'm here. He held her close and rubbed her back. It seems that Rose knows what is going on and he wants to ask her about it but right now, calming his girlfriend is more important. SHHSHH, I'm here Rose, are you okay now? Nick kept rubbing her back to comfort her. Rose stopped hyperventilating and her body became relaxed. Yes, thank you Nick. You are the best, said Rose affectionately. Anytime Rose, said Nick lovingly. The two stares at each other's eyes, seemingly having a moment and ignoring their surroundings. The nobles murmured among each other. The dead duke's daughter brought back to life in weird style clothing and showing public displays of affection with an equally weirdly dressed albeit handsome looking young man. How utterly disgraceful. Prince William looked at the public display of affection in disbelief. A sudden heavy feeling rises up within him that he couldn't pinpoint but he chose to ignore it. Stop this appalling scene. I demand you to tell me how you are still alive Rose. Enough William. Your behavior is atrocious. Have you forgotten everything your tutors ever taught you? The king yelled at his son. But father, I said enough. Let me do the talking. Now go back to sitting on your throne like a proper prince and keep yourself silent. Prince William, with a look of fear in his eyes, shut his mouth and didn't say anything more. The surrounding nobles had also kept silent, afraid of the king's ire. Meanwhile, Rose and Nick stopped having their moment and observed the king. That stupid prince finally shut his trap, thought Rose with a smirk. The king turned to look at the young couple. He noticed that their way of dress is unusual but that is not very important right now. He turned his attention solely on Rose. He has no idea why Rosalind is alive. Everyone had witnessed her execution a month ago. The Duke, her own father, even had her body buried somewhere far away from the kingdom. But the king actually knows why Rosalind is here. Since he was the sole reason why she was summoned in the first place, he expected someone else to appear in the summoning. Never did he expect Rosalind of all people to show up, a very alive Rosalind. But it seems that his kingdom needs the formerly dead girl. Making sure he has her attention, the king said the words that again, shocking everyone to the core. Rosalind Mears, you are summoned to come before me to fulfill a prophecy. Prophecy edited the 4th of April 2023. What? Can you repeat it again? Did you just say that I was summoned to fulfill some stupid prophecy? Rose asked, not caring that she didn't address the king by his title or how rude she sounded. Well, Yes, the king said hesitantly and felt hurt that she called the prophecy stupid. I had my highest ranking mage perform a summoning for the prophesied savior of my kingdom. The Solaris kingdom has been getting attacked by demons and if we don't stop them we will soon be invaded. Our oracle had a vision that we must summon a savior with a special spell from our most powerful mage. I didn't expect that it would be you to appear before me since you were dead. Rose finished for him impassively. Yes, by the way Rosalind. How are you still Ali? None of your business and I think your highest ranking mage summoned the wrong person, said Rose, cutting the king off again. Also, my name is Rosemary now. She is so disrespectful to the king, a random noble exclaimed in the background. Rose just continued, yeah anyway, have your mage send us back home, she said, waving her hand in a careless manner. But Miss Meyer, this is your home and, it's Dale. What? Will you please st? My last name is Dale not Maya, and my home is back on earth, will you please stop cutting me off, and what is earth, if you were anyone else right now I would have you, did you forget that you were the one that had me decap it, Nick, who is standing silently watching the back and forth between Rose and the king, widened his eyes in horror on what he almost heard, what, Nick exclaimed in shock and horror but he is unheard, enough, the king shouted, he almost have had it with this girl before him, he can feel a headache coming. You cannot go home until you successfully completed the task you are summoned for. What? Rose exclaimed in disbelief. But wasn't the hero I mean Anali supposed to save the kingdom since she is the saintess? Isn't she in the prophecy? Hearing that, Prince William stood up abruptly from the throne. Still seeing Rose as a vile bully of his beloved Anali's he yelled. How did you know that? Don't you dare speak her name you vile woman. William. I told you to stay silent. If you disobey me one more time, I will make your brother the crown prince in your stead. This threat shocked William so much that it shut the prince up for good. He slid slowly back to his throne without a word and decided to glare heatedly at Rose. The king gave a last angry glare at William then turned back to face Rose. 
He also wondered how Rosalind knew that Annalise is a saintess. Yes, Miss Barton was in the prophecy, but something has happened to her. Well, what the hell happened to her? Rose asked, still not caring of her rudeness. Miss Barton was attacked by a demon and is in a comatose state. The fuck? The heroine is in a coma? Rose shouted in her head. A.N. Happy New Year. Replacing the heroine edited the 4th of April 2023. Annalise is in a coma? Rose could not believe what she just heard. How can this have happened? Annalise is the protagonist, the heroine, the saintess. She is not supposed to be in a coma. Annalise is supposed to be blessed by the god of light and have op powers. She is supposed to be such an unstoppable force that she easily defeated the army of demons with one swipe of her powers. Then after that, she and Prince William marries and lives happily ever after. A measly demon was not supposed to be able to hurt her. That was how the shitty novel was supposed to go anyway. The novel she discovered back on earth that details her own life. But now it seems that the novel is deviating from the plot. Rose needed answers. Since I already exposed myself for knowing that Annalise is the saintess, how was a demon able to attack her? Isn't the blessing of the god of light the ultimate power to defeat any evil? No demon was supposed to even get even close to her. The king is in disbelief that Rose knows all of this. He vows to get answers from her. First she is back from the dead, and now she has knowledge of things she wasn't even alive for to know or hear about. You are right. Miss Barton had the blessing of the God of Light, we witnessed her display of powers firsthand, but when it was time for her to face the demon army, she exhibited her powers but then it suddenly disappeared, she kept trying to bring forth her light powers but it never appears again. We realized this too late when a demon ran towards her and fatally attacked her. I had called forth my army to fight the demons while Miss Barton was brought to be treated by our best healers. So far. My army suffered heavy casualties and the Miss Barton has not awakened even though she is fully healed. It has been almost a month since the attack, a month. If the king said Rose died a month ago, that means this situation happens shortly after Rose's death. The demon army was supposed to show up much longer after her death, about half a year according to the novel. The demon army attacked much earlier than what was expected than in the novel. What in the world is going on? So Miss Dale. Will you agree to be the savior of my kingdom? The king asked. He hopes she agreed because there is no other person except her. Rose started to think deeply. The king said that she and Nick will be able to go back home after she completed her task, which is to save this awful kingdom from the demon invasion. Annalise is currently out of commission, and now our prophecy says that she is the next savior? But how can she save this kingdom? She doesn't have magic. In her old body when she still lives in this world, Rose did have the ability of water, but she was very weak in utilizing it. Now as a person from Earth, she would have no abilities at all. No one on Earth had magic so why would she? So what can she do? Nothing. This is a huge problem. How can she save the kingdom without any abilities? Unless her water ability comes back to her somehow, she has no power to help her fight the demons. But she is the prophesied savior, so there must be something she can do to defeat the demons, but she doesn't know what. She really wants to reject saving this awful kingdom and leave this awful world, but she have no choice. If she and Nick wants to go back to Earth, her true home, she has to complete her task. With that thought, she finally made her choice. I accept your majesty, Rose answered, finally addressing the king properly, but there is one problem. I am glad that you accepted. But what is the problem Miss Dale? The king asked. I don't have any magic. A huge obstacle edited the 4th of April 2023. What? Did you just say you have no magic? The king exclaimed in surprise. Are you deaf? That is what I just said, confirmed Rose rudely. I am not repeating myself. The rest of the royal family and all the other nobles in the room are just wondering why the king still does not reprimand or punish Rose for her rudeness. But I remembered that you did have water magic. That information is in the kingdom's records. Yeah, in this world I did have magic, but since I was reborn as someone from Earth my home, I don't have magic anymore. How can you be so sure? Maybe being summoned back to Guile will unlock your magic again, countered the king. I don't think so because this is my new body. My old body was buried remember. A long silence occurs, 
No one dares to speak in this moment of silence. Finally the king spoke. This is a huge obstacle but it wouldn't hurt to have a demonstration. Maybe you still have magic even in your new earth body. A demonstration? So you want me to try to show you if I still have my water magic? Rose shouted. I'm telling you I don't. Impossible. No way do I still have magic. This body is a body born from earth. Magic does not exist on earth. How am I supposed to save this kingdom without magic? How can I return back to Earth? Rose thought worriedly. If I can't save this damn kingdom, how else can I return home? This whole situation is so out of hand. If you don't feel ready, we can have your demonstration next week. This should be enough time for you to get settled to be back on Gaia. Would that be fine with you Miss Dale? The king asked kindly. Dot I guess that is fine with me. Rose said, unwillingly. Then it is settled. You will have your demonstration next week. A fucking demonstration, just great. I'm gonna make an utter fool of myself in front of all the people I hate in this stupid fantasy world, Rose thought bitterly. She doesn't even care about this world anymore. Note, we'll update more chapters later. He is not my father. Edited the 4th of April 2023. I now call forth Duke Mayers to come forward. The king called out to the crowd of nobles. A tall handsome man in his early forties came forward to the middle of the throne room. He has dark brown hair with some silver streaks and icy blue eyes. He gave an imposing aura and his face is expressionless. He stood about a yard away from Rose and Nick. With his arms folded behind his back, he bowed to the king. Your Majesty, how may I be of service? The Duke greeted respectfully. Is Rosalind's room still available? Yes, it is still available. I hadn't had the time to refurnish it. The Duke thought, he expected to renovate his thought to be dead daughter's room into another guest room. Great, then Miss Dale can go back to live with Y. Who says I will be living with the Duke? Rose interrupted the King, and my name is Rose Marie, not Rosalyn. I told you before about my name, but the Duke is your father. You should be happy to go back and live in the Duke's estate. He is not my father, he is just a sperm donor. I am not living with a piece of shit. Rose insulted the Duke which was heard clearly to everyone in the room. The nobles and the rest of the royals, who have been silent the whole time listening to the banter between Rose and the king, was again in utter shock. This girl is too bold and fearless. Never in Gaia have they heard someone call their own father, especially the duke, a sperm donor. And to foully curse him too? What does sperm donor even mean? Among the nobles is a tall young man that looks like a younger version of the duke. The young man stared in disbelief at Rose because of what he just heard. No way would his sister talk about their father that way. He must be hearing things. Is this truly his sister Rose? Duke Augustus Meyer still showed no expression, but on the inside he was greatly offended. The Rosalind he knew would never say something that sounds so derogatory about him. The Rosalind he knew always tries to gain his attention. Living in that whatever this earth world is must have made her forget herself. He needs to talk some sense into her. Rosalind Liliana Mayers. I am your father. How dare you disrespect me. His Majesty, His Highness, and everyone else in this very room. I order you to apologize to everyone here. You seem to have forgotten your etiquette lessons. So once we get home, I shall enforce a tag. Rose cut him off. Shut up you stupid old man. How dare you order me to apologize. I am not your daughter anymore. I am never going to live with you again. You were never a father to me so you don't deserve my presence. I also don't want to see that idiot dumbass of a brother either. You both were never my family and never treated me as such. My real family is back home on earth and I will do whatever it takes to save this godforsaken kingdom to get me and my boyfriend home. And my name is Rosemary Victoria Dale. Remember it. Clearly. Rose at this point became fed up with being called Rosalyn. Rosalyn, the person she was before, is dead. She was killed in this horrible world and gone forever. With manic eyes, Rose turns and looks around every spectator in the room. She waves her arms around, not caring that she might look crazy. You hear me everyone. My name is Rosemary Victoria Dale. Get it right through your head. Rosalyn Liliana Mears is dead. She died without justice because of everyone in this very room who liked to paint her as an evil villainess. Rose then seems to be going through an episode. Rose, Rose, are you okay? Are you having a panic attack? Nick held Rose securely in his arms. Nick, like the others in the room, had been silent when the king and Rose spoke to each other. He has no reason to involve himself in their conversation because this is Rose's business. 
it seems that Rosemary used to be a girl named Rosalyn in this world they were transported into. Nick deduced that Rose died unjustly based on observing her emotions. How much had his girlfriend suffered? Hopefully, Rose will speak to him about her past later. Her emotional state is getting haywire and he needs to be there for her. Rose was able to calm herself down within the comfort of Nick's arms. She always felt safe being held by him. I am fine Nick. Thank you for your support again. I am such an emotional wreck, said Rose guiltily. Don't put yourself down Rose. Given the situation, I would have felt the same way, said Nick in concern. God, you are the best boyfriend ever. I know they would have stayed in their own little bubble again but now is not the time for that. Now that Rose is calm once again, Rose ignored the Duke and turned to the King. I want my own house, she stated with a tone the expects no argument. Note, I edited a bit on the previous chapters, mostly just adding that Rosalind is now called Rose Marie. I am not a professional writer but I hope you like the story so far. Thank you for reading. Boyfriend edited the 26th of November 2023. Note, as of the 26th of November 2023 I combined the short chapters to make one long chapter. You want your own house? The king asked Tunchley. That's right. I want my own house for the both of us to live. I don't care what kind of house it is, said Rose, but you can live W again. The king was cut off. Don't ask me to live with a shithead duke again. Duke Augustus' eyebrows twitched and seethed anger at hearing another slander, but he remained silent. He is in the presence of royalty. The king sighed. He wouldn't have catered to her demands like this if she wasn't the prophesied savior of his kingdom. All right. I will agree to give you your own home with that, young lad beside you. Augustus? Miss Dale will not be living with you. Duke Augustus could not believe that the king easily agrees with his wayward daughter's demand. But your majesty I... Duke Meyer, this is final. Go back to your spot. I understand your majesty. Duke Meyer said and went back to the crowd of nobles and stood beside the young man that looks like a younger version of him. Father, the young man began. Not now Tristan. The nobles murmured among themselves about the events they just witnessed. Silence. Now Miss Dale, is having your own house the only thing you wanted? No. Well, then what else do you need? I want to leave this place permanently. Rose thought, obviously the both of us need money, clothes, food or whatever necessities in order to survive here, stated Rose. All right, I will make sure you get everything you needed in order for you to settle comfortably in my kingdom, the king promised. Thank you your majesty, Rose said gratefully, surprising everyone for finally showing respect to the king. Finally, I will not associate myself with the duke anymore. Dash after the events in the throne room. Rose and Nick were allowed to stay in the palace guest rooms until the next day, where they will leave the palace towards their own home somewhere. All the nobles were dismissed and it is now just the two teens and the royal family left in the throne room. Michael, our butler will take you both to your guest rooms. Later he will call you to have dinner with us royals, the king told Rose. Um, guest rooms? Why not have us stay in one room? Rose asked but has a feeling she knows why. Are you married? The king asked back. No, but, it is inappropriate to have an unmarried woman stay with a man in the same room. Well I won't accept this. Nick is my boyfriend and we are staying together in the same room. Prince William, sitting on his own throne opened his mouth to say something but remembers the king's threat so he closed it. He will talk to his father later about Rose. So he is your friend then? That is what I assumed at first even though you seem awfully close to each other. Well, even a male friend can't stay in the same room as you. Uck, no, he is not my friend, Rose exclaimed, throwing her hands up in the air. I'm her lover, said a new voice. The royal family and Rose turned to look at the source of the voice. Nick, who hasn't been speaking much and had only been communicating with Rose, finally felt he has to say something to the king. What? What is your name young lad, and did you say you are Miss Dale's lover? The king asked the young man. My name is Nielos your majesty, and yes I am Rose's lover, said Nick in a matter-of-fact tone. Prince William hearing that tone, glared hatefully at Nick. I see, Miss Dale, can you confirm that Mr. Nielos is courting you? Rose held her left hand up, showing a ring on her ring finger. Nick gave me a promise ring. The queen, who had been silent this whole time, is a major lover of jewellery, was looking at Rose's ring in wonder. 
It was simple in design but still beautiful and pleasing to the eye. What in the hell is a promise ring? Don't tell me that it is like an engagement ring, Prince William thought, feeling uneasy. The other prince, Prince Antonius was just silently enjoying the drama on his throne. If he was someone from Rose's world, he would be munching on a bag of popcorn watching the drama unfold. Is that an engagement ring? The king asked, looking at the ring. No, said Rose. Prince William quietly sighed in relief, surprising himself. It's a pre-engagement ring. What? Prince William was again shocked. A pre-engagement ring? What in the heaven is that supposed to mean? The prince thought in disbelief. What is wrong with you prince? Please explain Miss Dale. The king asked about the promise ring. A promise ring is a precursor of an engagement ring. This means that later Nick will give me an engagement ring someday. We are very much in love and committed to each other. We plan to get engaged after college since we are still in high school, Rose explained. What is college and high school? So they have academies on this earth? The king wanted to ask but decided not to. The king saw the teens standing very close to each other, with the young man wrapping his arm around her. Well I cannot afford to instigate more of the former daughter of the Duke's wrath. My kingdom needs her so it's best to continue catering to her for now. All right, since you both are courting each other. I will allow you to share the same guest room. I will have Michael lead you to your room. Both of you will have dinner with us. So he will call for you when it's time. The royal butler Michael appears out of nowhere. He looks to be in his fifties or sixties. This way Miss Dale and Cernia Laws, said butler Michael, holding his arm out towards the direction. Cernia Laws, huh? I kind of like it, said Nick with a smirk. Of course you do, said Rose in amusement and elbowed him playfully. Both deans followed the butler out of the throne room. Prince William sat frozen on his throne, staring at the spot the teens had stood. No one can tell what he is thinking. Dash the royal butler Michael led them to a corridor where there are many doors to rooms. He unlocked and opened the closest door. This will be your room for the night. I will come back to lead you to the dining room when it's time for super, said Michael. Thank you for taking us to our room, said Nick. Yes, thank you kind sir for leading the way said Rose. The butler gave a bittersweet smile. Michael had seen Rosalind when she visited the royal palace during her engagement with Prince William. She was very kind to the him and the rest of the royal staff. He was among the witnesses of Rosalind's execution to his horror, and didn't believe she deserved her death. Unfortunately, he couldn't go against the royal family to stop the trial since their word is law. I'm happy to see you again Rose, said butler Michael. I'm happy to see you too Michael. Rose gave a sad bitter smile. Butler Michael left, and the two teens head inside the room. Now it's just us, said Nick. Yeah, we are finally alone to ourselves, said Rose. Not a chapter. Do you want this story to have? 1. Smut. Lemon scenes. S. Scenes. 2. Fluff. 3. Implied smut. Lemon. Warning, Rose and Nick are not 18 yet. They are both 17. Nick is 7 months older. So, 4. Smut. Lemon scenes after they turn 18. Pick a number and put your choice in the comments section and I will count it. I will take the choice that is most popular by this Wednesday April 13th. Whatever number you pick that is most popular may change the rating of this story. I heard of stories being reported and got deleted on Wattpad. I won't put anything that is offensive on my stories. If you don't like this story just don't read it. I am just writing this story for fun. I am not making a profit from it. I just want to expand my imagination. So thank you all for reading and enjoying my stories. I am trying to update more but I have two jobs. One of my job is temporary so I will update a lot more once that job is done. It's my fault edited the 4th of April 2023. Wow, this room is quite fancy, and it's just a guest room. Nick whistled, looking around the extravagance of the room. Rose also looked around the room, uninterested. Her old room back in the Duke's estate was more extravagant. If she was the old Rose, she would have felt insulted for being provided this room. The new Rose is more humbled about what she has since she re-evaluated her life after being reborn. This room is nothing compared to my room back on Earth. I had my BTS and Demon Slayer posters, stated Rose. Ha, huh, you're right, Nick chuckled. My room had my classic rock band posters and that hole in the wall I accidentally punched. Wow, Nick. How strong are you? You should get it fixed when we get back, Rose pointed out. Yeah, Nick agreed. He walked over towards the silk bed and sat on it. 
He looked down and felt the texture of the fabric. This bed feels so smooth and soft. Um, Nick, Rose nervously called. Yes Rose, Nick replied, still looking down. Are you going to ask me about what was going on earlier? Nick finally looked up and connected his eyes with Rose's eyes. They both stared intensely at each other. Come here, Nick's deep voice said huskily, with a come hither gesture with his index finger. Rose broke eye contact and looked to her side. She somehow felt afraid to look in his eyes again. Come here Rose, Nick called again, his voice sounding more seductive. Rose blushed uncontrollably. Still without looking back at Nick, she slowly walked towards him. With her head down, she walked closer until she sees the edge of his shoes. Suddenly, she was pulled closer until Nick had her sat on his lap. They are both wearing light clothing so Rose can feel the hard planes of his abs on her back. Nick, Rose called, again nervously. SHH, let me just enjoy being this close to you, Nick said soothingly with his eyes closed, no one is talking for a moment, just enjoying each other's warmth, Rose, Nick said, breaking the silence after a moment, yes Nick, I do have a lot of questions I want to ask you, but I want you to feel comfortable first, I know that you feel that you have a lot to take in right now, said Nick gently, but aren't you angry, Rose asked hesitantly, angry, at you? Why would I be? Nick asked her confused. Nick turned Rose around his lap until they are face to face. Why would I be angry at you? Because I basically have been hiding my past from you. Rose suddenly shouted, tears falling from her face. Rose, you heard everything back there. You would know by now I've been keeping things from you based on my conversation with the king. I thought I would leave everything behind me and lead a normal life that was granted to me by fate. But now the both of us are unexpectedly stuck here. So you must have felt betrayed by me right? Rose Nick was again cut off. You were always there for me since childhood, but never would you have known that the little girl on the tricycle who crashed into you the day we met would come from a completely different world. Rose, please Cal. I'm sorry Nick, it is all my fault that you got dragged into this mess. Because of me, your life is in danger. This world is terrible and dangerous so you might even get killed. I understand if you don't love me Anim. Nick suddenly grabbed her face and kissed Rose passionately. Note, Rose is an emotional roller coaster. Character Profiles Part 1 Updated the 28th of September 2023. Name, Rosemary Rose Victoria Dale, formerly Rosalind Liliana Mayers. Age, 17. Height, 5 feet 3 inches, 160 centimeters. Hair color, golden brown. Eye color, blue. Occupation, high school senior. Earth, Duke's daughter, Gaia. Personality, cares about the people close to her, can be emotional, has a temper if get on her bad side. Likes, her boyfriend Nick, her friends and family back on Earth. Betty S, boy band, watching anime, her favorite is Demon Slayer, girly and cute things, fluffy animals, eating Korean style corn dogs. Dislikes, the people of the Solaris Kingdom in Gaia, especially her former family and the royal family. Hates the Duke and Prince William, fake people, people who judged her for no reason or without facts. The novel My Fair Maiden, skills, cooking, cheerleading, earth, track and field, earth, water magic, Gaia, formerly, her image is on the story cover. Name, Nielos Nick Loron. Age, colon 17, 7 months older than Rose. Height, 6 feet 1 inch, 185 centimeters. Hair color, black. Eye color gray. Occupation, high school senior. Earth, Gaia. Personality, cares about the people close to him. Always calm and collected, can be playful. Cold if get on his bad side, not very talkative. Likes, his girlfriend Rose. Listening to rock music, collecting rock albums, especially classics, his electric guitar, playing video games, being active, martial arts, dislikes, anyone who wants to harm the people he cares about especially when concerning Rose, fake people, skills, different martial arts, driving a motorcycle and performing tricks with it, playing his electric guitar. Imagine that he has a low ponytail that is shoulder length. I do not own any of the images. I don't care. Very Light 18 Plus, edited the 26th of November 2023. Just heavy kissing scene. Note, as of the 26th of November 2023 I combined some chapters to make one long chapter. The kiss caught Rose off guard. She couldn't help but moan when Nick suddenly slid his tongue into her mouth to rub against her own. 
Their tongues danced against each other. Nick's tongue also explored the roof of her mouth. One of Nick's hands slowly slid down her body to squeeze her ass under her skirt. He then started to suck on her tongue, which turned Rose on. Rose can feel her panties being a bit wet from the pleasurable feeling. After a moment, they broke apart. Some saliva dripped from their mouths. Nick licked his lips and he bent his head towards Rose to lick the saliva off the corner of Rose's mouth. Nick leaned back to take a good look at Rose. Rose's face is flushed red and her eyes became heavy lidded. She seems to be in a daze. Rose was breathing a bit heavily from the rise and fall of her chest. The redness spread from her face, down her neck and possibly lower. Nick wanted to explore her body but now is not the time for that because of Rose's emotional state. I don't care, he told Rose. Rose broke out of her daze. W what? She stammered. What did you say? I don't care Rose. I don't care that you didn't tell me about your past and that you came from a different world. It doesn't bother me at all. But why doesn't this bother you? Aren't I like some weird alien girl to you? Don't you want to know what kind of person I was before? Rose asked cautiously. Whatever kind of person you were in the past, it doesn't define who you are right now, Nick stated factually. People can change and be better than what they were before. I want you to feel comfortable with yourself so that you are ready to talk to me about your past. He grabbed her hands and gently held it. The rose I know right now is kind but has a temper, is elegant but can be a total klutz. She also had always been a weirdo, Nick said humorously. Hey, Rose shouted, feeling attacked. She also eats too many corn dogs than I can count. Rose gave a piercing glare at Nick, which he ignored. I don't eat that many corn dogs. Are you calling me fat? The Korean corn dogs are so good though. She is the most caring person I know, and that is why I fell in love with her. Nick suddenly grabbed her face without hurting her and suddenly gave her a glare. Rose, seeing his expression, became scared. Don't you dare say that I don't love you anymore. You can't just assume my feelings for you. I love you Rosemary Victoria Dale, Nick emphasized, looking directly to her eyes. Rose felt very moved about what Nick just said and was about to tear up again. She grabbed Nick by the shoulders and hugged him tightly. Nick reciprocates the hug. Oh Nick, how can you be so understanding? I love you so much, Rose cried. I love you too, Nick said against her ear. They then pulled away from each other again. Oh, and don't worry about me being in danger. I don't mind being your knight in shining armor. Nick, you have been so good to me that I sometimes feel like I don't deserve you, said Rose honestly. Rose, are you feeling down again? Nick said slowly and cautiously. I thought my speech made her feel better. He thought, perplexed. No, please don't misunderstand Nick. What you said made me feel better. Rose waved her hands around to deny it. She seems to be reading his mind. Phew. That's a relief, said Nick, releasing his breath. I just wanted to say that you have been an amazing boyfriend, we had known each other since like forever. Our relationship is based on trust, but I hadn't been as open to you as I should, she said with a feeling of regret. Does this mean that you are going to tell me what I think it is? Nick asked, seemingly reading her mind. Yes Nick, it wouldn't have been believable before, but since you just experienced the same situation with me earlier, it is now a good time to tell you. Nick gave a baited breath. He had his arms wrapped around her waist while she still sat on his lap. It is time I tell you about my past. My life in this world, Gaia. Note, this story will have mature scenes. Reader discretion is advised. I will label the chapters that have smut, lemon scenes. Past part 1, birth edited the 4th of April 2023. Rosalind Liliana Mears was born on a winter day. The day had a snowstorm. So it was snowing very heavily. The Duchess Mayor's water broke on this day so the Duke had to have one of his servants call for a midwife and a doctor to attend his wife. The Duchess was laying in bed sweating so much and her skin had a sickly pale pallor. The servant was able to find a midwife and a doctor in the snowstorm. All three shared a carriage to return to the Duke's estate. Unfortunately, they took a longer time to make it to the estate because of the increasing snow. When they finally made it to the estate, the Duchess seemingly looks to be on the edge of death. The Duke was beside her bedside, clutching her hands as his wife screams in pain from her contractions. Duke Augustus Mayers had an expression of complete anguish. The young heir of the Meyer household, Tristan August Mayers, stood outside the bedroom door hearing his mother's suffering. With tears falling out, the three-year-old clenched his eyes shut, 
and prays that his mother and unborn sibling will be okay. The midwife tried her best to support the Duchess and deliver the baby. It took hours for the Duchess to push the baby out. In those hours, the entire room is just filled with her screams. The baby came into the world with a piercing wail. The midwife confirmed it is a girl. She wrapped the baby girl in a blanket and handed her over to Duke. The Duke held the baby gently and took a look good at her. He saw that his daughter is very small and her face is flushed red from crying so much. Still, he sees that he has a beautiful baby daughter. He rarely shed any tears, but for the birth of his daughter he was overcome with emotion. He then smiled brightly, so brightly that it would have lit the whole room. He lifted his head to look at his wife on the bed. His smile instantly disappeared. The Duchess was not looking too good. During the delivery of the baby, she was bleeding heavily. The doctor was able to stop the bleeding with his healing magic and tried his best with to cure the Duchess of any internal damage to her body, but it was too late. You cannot cure someone who is a seconds away from death's door. The Duchess painfully turned her head to look at her baby daughter being held by her husband. She stared longingly at them. She knows that her time is up and it saddens her that her daughter will not be able to see her mother. She struggles to open her mouth. Rosalind, the Duchess croaked out. With finally naming her daughter, the Duchess closed her eyes for the final time. The doctor stood up from hunching over the Duchess to heal her and shook his head. The Duchess has passed on, said the doctor gravely. W what? What did you say? No, it can't be. Michelle, the Duke cried out, the feeling of anguish filling his core. He harshly handed baby Rosalind to the midwife and rushed over the, the Duchess's cold body. Michelle, please wake up. My beloved wife, please don't leave me. He hunched over the Duchess's cold body and desperately tried to shake his wife awake. Baby Rosalind, who had stopped crying while being held by the Duke, was now crying again and even louder before while in the arms of the midwife. The midwife tried to calm her down. The Duke finally stopped his attempts at waking up his lifeless wife and stiffened at the sound of Rosalind's cry. He stood straight up from his hunched form. His back to the midwife and baby daughter, without looking at them, he spoke to the midwife. Take that monster away from us, he said chillingly, a deep contrast to his feelings before. He blamed baby Rose for the Duchess's death. Past part 2, Will You Play With Me? Edited the 4th of April 2023. Five years later, little Rosalind Lilana Myers doesn't understand what she did wrong. Ever since she was born, no one in the estate had been kind to her. She had no one to talk to of her problems. She only had herself to talk to. One day while looking at herself in the mirror, she asks herself these questions. Why doesn't father and brother visit me? When will I be allowed to eat with father and brother? Why do the maids always give me mean looks? Where is my mother? Why had I never seen her around? She suddenly heard some thwacking noises outside her window. She rushed over to look out her window for the source of the sound. She sees that her brother Tristan, the young heir of the dukedom, hitting the practice dummy outside with his wooden sword. Rosalind suddenly had an idea. Maybe her brother will play with her this time if she said she wants to train with him. Little Rosalind felt hope in her heart. She then rushes to change into her outdoor clothing without the help of the maids. She left her room to head outside. Dash. Tristan felt tired from hitting the training dummy. His instructor told him to hit it a thousand times today to improve his accuracy. Brother. Brother Tristan. A young female voice yelled from a distance. Tristan abruptly stopped his actions and stiffened from the voice. Rosalind finally came closer to him. She stood behind Tristan with still some space between them. Brother, can I train with with you? Rosalind said excitedly, but inside she is nervous. Tristan did not say anything for a moment. His back still facing her. Please brother, I just want to play with you. We never spent any time together, Rosalind said desperately. They are the only two kids in the estate and Rose really wants to play with someone around her age. Don't call me that, Tristan yelled, shocking Rose. W what? Tristan abruptly turned around to face her and pointed his wooden sword at her. Rose fell backwards onto the grass scared out of her wits. Seeing her brother's face, Rose instantly paled. Tristan gave her the coldest glare she ever seen beside the Duke's. I, A M, not your brother. Tristan emphasized chillingly, looking like a cold younger version of the Duke. Get that into your dumb little head. Rose sat frozen on the grass staring in fear at Tristan. She is unable to speak anymore. Seeing her unable to talk, Tristan smirked evilly. And you said you want to train with me? You want to play with me? 
You think holding his sword is fun in games? Tristan said, still pointing his wooden sword at her face. Rose is still silent, unable to make any sudden moves. She is pale and sweating profusely. If I had a real sword, I could have killed you. No, I should kill you. You want to know why? Tristan waved the wooden sword around. Rose. It's because you killed mother. Rose snapped out of it. M mother? I killed mother. What are you talking about? Rose tried to stand back up but Tristan harshly kicked her chest and made her stumbled back. Rose laid on the grass in pain. Tristan stood above her with his foot on her chest, his sword still pointing at her face. If you did not realize that you killed our mother, then you are dumber than my training dummy. Can't you see how everyone's been treating you? How father has been treating you? He yelled. What is he taking about? Thought Rose. How did I kill mother? I have never met mother. I thought she is alive living somewhere else. Why you are not M making any sense to me? Rose struggled out, still in pain. You killed mother when she gave birth to you. You should never have been born. You are a monster, and I will treat you the same way as everyone else, as someone who should be eradicated. He said harshly, with a final glare, Tristan took his foot off her chest and started to walk away. Rosalyn, who should be the proud daughter of the Duke, laid on the grass with dirty clothing, staring into nothingness at the sky above. Back to the present edited the 4th of April 2023. Present Rose was telling Nick her past starting with her relationship with the Duke and Tristan. They are her past self father and brother. Rose refused to call them her father and brother with her current self. So yeah. My past self was a girl named Rosalind Liliana Mayers. The Duke and Tristan hated me since the day I was born because I caused my previous mom's death, Rose summarized. Nick is just flabbergasted at what he just heard, but you didn't cause your rem I mean previous mother's death. It could be a number of factors like the midwife and doctor being late due to the snow, he said analytically. Yeah, I know that now, but back then I had always believed I caused my past mom's death. Rose said sadly, it's thanks to that book for making me realize the truth, Rose thought, and how could they call you a monster or a demon? You were just a baby. For being nobles they are sure are dumb as fuck, Nick said angrily. They are, Rose agreed. I am so glad they are not part of my life anymore. I hate that Tristan guy the most. He threatened you and had the audacity to kick you on the chest. You were just a five-year-old girl. If I ever get my hands on him, I will teach him a lesson. I won't stop you. Someone needs to kick his ass for once, Rose encouraged. Nick can definitely beat up Tristan's ass because he knows a lot of martial arts. Hell, he is a black belt in karate. Let's move on to the next part of my story. This part you are not going to like even more. Nick gave a blank expression. Don't tell me, I have a feeling what the next part of your story will be about. It's that sissy prince isn't it? Ha, huh? sissy prince. Don't let him hear you say that or else he will have your head chopped off. Rose joked but immediately regrets it, like he did mine. She thought humorlessly. Nick seems to hear her thought and became silent for a moment. Please don't scare me Rose. No one's head will be chopped off. I would like to keep my handsome face. Thank you. He joked to dispel any negativity. Ha. Huh? Rose laughed, brightening the mood. Past part 3, engagement edited the 4th of April 2023. Rosalind 10 years old. Rose did whatever she could to please the Duke to gain his attention. She wanted to show her father that she is a very capable daughter by trying to perfect every lesson thrown at her by her tutors. Whether it be etiquette, piano, history, or any other lessons in order to be an ideal lady of the Maya household, there was barely free time for her to enjoy. Most of the day always consist of studying something. Rose done it all, perfectly like a lady should, but the Duke was never satisfied. He is still cold to her as ever. Whenever Rose wanted to speak to the Duke, she can never approach him closely. She always maintained six feet away from where he stood because the Duke wanted it that way. She was never able to have a conversation with him. He always replied back curtly before leaving her abruptly. She always spoke to him in fear, and it's usually on updates about her studies. Rose hopes that the Duke will praise her for her good work but he never did. With Tristan, Rose never initiated speaking to him again after that day. Every time he is within distance from her, Rose cowers in fear and rushes away from him. Tristan never seeks her out and barely speaks to her. If he spoke to her, usually it's to tell her to get out of his way. Rose was finally allowed to eat with the Duke and Tristan when she turned eight a couple years ago. The dining room has a long table, so Rose sat at the opposite end from the Duke while Tristan can sit on the Duke's right side close to each other. 
Rose always remained silent during their meals together because of the atmosphere and her fear. One day the Duke calls her to his study after dinner. Come to my study, is all he said when he walked by her. Rose stiffens on her seat by the dinner table. She became nervous because the Duke never calls her to his study before. She wonders if she is in trouble. When she still remains seated, Tristan who just finished his dinner glared at her. Are you an idiot? Go follow him, he said harshly. Rose jilted out of her seat and followed the Duke. Dash. For the first time ever, Rose is having an actual conversation with the Duke. The conversation will soon make Rose wish to never experience again. Rose entered the Duke's study. The Duke's study is well furnished, and there are shelves all around the study filled with many books. The Duke sat behind his large desk and clasped his hands together while Rose stood across from him with shaking legs. He stared at Rose emotionlessly. His cold stare made Rose sweat nervously, so she averted her eyes. Look at me in the eyes, the Duke said sharply. Rose stiffened and forced herself to follow the Duke's command. Once they make eye contact, the Duke spoke again. You will be engaged to Prince William, he said. W what? Rose stuttered. Engaged? I don't like repeating myself, you better hear me clearly. You will be engaged to Prince William. But, how can Rose be engaged? It doesn't feel right to her. Is there a problem? The Duke asked in a threatening tone with a raised eyebrow. Yes, the Duke banged his desk with his fist and stood up suddenly. You dare defy me? The Duke said angrily. Please Duke, please hear what I have to say. Just this one time, Rose pleaded. The room became eerily silent. Rose gulped. Speak, said the Duke, staring unblinkingly at her. Rose gave a shuddering breath. I have never met Prince William so I cannot accept an engagement to someone I don't know. I feel this is too sudden. I want to choose who I want to marry. I will marry someone who I fall in love with and who will love me back. Rose said, being brave for the first time. I refuse the engagement, she said with finality, maintaining eye contact with the Duke's angry eyes. Rose knows the engagement the Duke suggested is solely political. She learned about political marriages in her studies. But Rose wants to marry for love to the right person. The Duke chuckled hollowly. You said you want to choose who to marry? Someone to fall in love with and to love you back you say? Ha! Huh. His laugh became more manic. Rose suddenly regrets being brave. He went around his desk to approach Rose. Rose stepped backwards while trembling, then decided to try to escape the study. But the Duke was faster. The Duke grabbed her by the collar of her dress and lifted her up. As a ten-year-old, Rose was lightweight so she was lifted up easily. Listen you little demon, you don't get to choose, you don't deserve having choices. You will marry the crown prince, it doesn't matter if you don't love him or if he doesn't love you. After what you did, you don't deserve love, he yelled at her, his face showing a twisted expression. Rose froze in fear within his grasp, unable to speak. What did I do, tell me? I don't remember anything to make you hate me so much. Rose thought fearfully. She wanted to ask the Duke what she had done but is afraid to because of the position she is in. Could it possibly be what Tristan said that day? Even if he has twenty concubines, you will remain with Prince William. The King and I agreed to this engagement. If you don't follow my order, I will kill you. The Duke then dropped Rose to the floor. Rose gasped in pain. With his back turned, he walked towards the window with his hands clasped behind his back. Tomorrow. You will meet Prince William. If you fail to please his highness, I will dispose of you. Why are you saying this to me? Aren't I your daughter? Rose thought with tears falling out of her eyes. Rose is now even more afraid of the Duke than ever. She knew in her gut that the Duke will follow his threat. He will kill her. The Duke turned to face her again. Do you understand? Are you going to obey my order? He said chillingly, back to his emotionless self. Rose, still shaken, replied back. Yes Duke. I understand, she said unwillingly, I will follow your order. Good. Now get out of my study. With trembling legs, Rose stood up from the floor, and left the Duke's study without looking back. Note, Rose will soon meet Prince William. Rose didn't like the idea of being engaged without her consent. This is the first time she defies the Duke but have no choice in the matter. Past Part 4, Prince William edited the 4th of April 2023. The next morning, Rose had to get up early to prepare her meeting with Prince William. After the maids cleaned and doled her up, she was directed to the foyer. Rose became nervous since it's her first time meeting a prince and talking to someone outside the Duke's estate. 
It appears that Prince William came early. Rose saw a boy sitting by a round table drinking tea. On the table, there's a tea set and some pastries. The boy looks to be around her age. He seems to have an aristocratic face for a boy but maybe because he is royalty. His hair is whitish blonde. She couldn't tell his eye color yet because he was looking down at the table. As she came closer to him, the boy looked up, startling Rose. Now she can see his eyes. His eyes are blue, the same as her own eyes. You must be Lady Rosalind, he said in a smooth voice. It's a pleasure to meet you. Please come sit. Thank you your highness. Rose did as he said and sat across from him. Care for some tea and pastries? The pastries are delicious. Your chef did a wonderful job making them. Thank you for the compliment your highness. I'll be sure to tell the chef, said Rose as she took a sip of her tea and nibbled on a croissant. Rose was nervous before but now the feeling dissipated. The prince seems so nice so far. Right now they are enjoying a comfortable silence. So I believe you know why we are meeting today, continued Prince William. Yes your highness. There's no need to keep calling me your highness. Call me William since you're going to be my fiancé. Yes, William. But I want to know your thoughts on our engagement. Should I tell him I didn't want to be engaged in the first place? Rose thought, unsure. I, ah. Rose gulped. If I don't follow through this engagement, father might kill me. I am happy to be engaged to you, Prince William. Rose answered, smiling brightly. Oh was all Prince William said with a blank face. I think it will benefit both our families by going through this engagement. That is right. It will be a great benefit to both our families, especially with the Duke's connections. Prince William agreed. Connections? Rose asked. The Duke's influence is beyond our reach, is all Prince William said. By our he means the royal family. Prince William suddenly stood up from his seat. I apologize that I couldn't stay longer, but I have to go back. The prince said with a regretful look, but his tone said otherwise. Um, there is no need to apologize your high I mean William. I understand that you have duties to attend to, said Rose, confused. She thought their conversation would be longer. Prince William walked around the table to get closer to where Rose sat. He put his hand on her shoulder, making Rose stiffen a bit. He leaned towards her ear. I am also glad for this engagement Rose. I hope we will become good friends, he whispers to her. Prince William then left the estate, leaving Rose alone. Her meeting with Prince William was awfully short but Rose didn't mind. Friends? Rose asked nobody around. Why wouldn't he say friends when we will be married to each other someday? Back to the present again edited the 4th of April 2023. Nick gave a look of disgust. What's wrong? Rose asked. This Prince Willie sounded like he had ulterior motives, said Nick. You are right about that, Rose agreed. It was a short but weird conversation. I think he only cares about whatever benefits that would entail with the engagement, that's why he said connections. Nick continued, yeah, it became clear to me later on, said Rose regretfully, she hates that she was so naive back then. Now, Rose can see that William never wanted to be her fiancé with the way he acted when they met. Also, what's with the I am also glad for this engagement Rose, let's become good friends thing? Nick asked, that sounds so weird. Ha. Huh. Rose agreed again. That sounds contradicting. Engagements are more than just friends. And lastly, this is for you Rose. Rose braced herself. What did I do? She thought nervously. Having tea and croissant for breakfast? For shame Rose, for shame. Nick shakes his head in disappointment. This world doesn't have coffee Nick? Rose exclaimed, her face red as a tomato. Well, it's just blasphemy to not have coffee with your croissant. I'm glad that our beloved planet Earth have something over this world, Nick said jokingly. Rose laughed uncontrollably. Ha ha, Nick, you gotta stop being funny. I wouldn't trade our planet Earth for Gaia because Earth has coffee. No, not just coffee, Rose stopped laughing. Although Gaia has magic, Earth has everything I would ever need. Magic was never important to me. Family and love does. Dining Room Drama edited the 4th of April 2023. A few knocks on the door was heard. Lady Rose and Cernia Laws, this is Michael the Royal Butler. I am here to lead you both to the dining room for super, said Butler Michael outside the door. Oh, I guess the rest of my story will have to wait, said Rose looking towards the door. It seems that an hour flew by pretty quick, said Nick looking at his watch on his wrist. Hearing your story made time go by quite fast. Rose got off Nick's lap which made Nick give a disappointed look. She went to open the door. Good evening, Michael, 
Rose greeted the butler. Good evening Miss Rose. Are you both ready to head to the dining room? Michael asked. Yes, Rose replied. She turned back to look at Nick. Are you ready to go eat? Nick. Nick stood up from sitting on the bed. Yeah, I'm starving. Dash. In the dining room, six people are seated at a long table. The king and queen sat next to each other at the head of table. The two princes sat on the king's side on his right. Rose and Nick sat at the queen's side on her left. On the table there are various dishes. The foods on the table look similar to British and French dishes. There are foods like steak, salads, beef wellington, cottage pie, spring soup, bkef, and so on. The desserts are different fruit pies, cakes, and some pastries. For drinks, there is a pitcher of water and wine cups. There is just so many foods on the table that there is no way to finish everything. Seeing the amount of food, Rose rolled her eyes. Uck, rich people, she thought despite being used to be a rich noble herself. I am happy that you are joining us for dinner Miss Rose, said the king, ignoring Nick. Nick showed no reaction and had a bored expression. Wish I could say the same thing, said Rose uncaringly. The king's right eye twitched at her continued insolence with him. She is still not on friendly terms with the king. The queen had her hands over her mouth in shock, still not over Rose's behavior from before. Prince William clenched his fork tightly. Prince Antonia struggles to not break into a smile. The second prince has no problem being a bystander and likes seeing more drama. Well, okay, shall we dine in? The king awkwardly said and gave the signal for everyone to eat. The atmosphere is uncomfortable. Rose decides to start eating the meat dishes. She first tried some of the beef wellington. She have never tried beef wellington in both lives. In Gaia, the dish is reserved for members of the royal family only. Oh God, this is so good. The taste is sweet and savory, and just melts in your mouth. Nick, have you tried beef wellington before? Rose asked her boyfriend. Nick was chewing on his steak when Rose asked him. He gulped his food down. No, I hadn't before. Is it that good? He asked. Here, try it. Rose offered her piece of the beef wellington with her fork. Nick leaned towards it and ate the piece of food off the utensil. You are right. It's very good. Nick nodded, eyes closed in bliss at the taste. If we ever visit to Britain, let's eat it again, Rose suggested. Sure. The royal family could not help but hear what Rose said and they were surprised. It seems that this world of Earth have similar foods to Gaia. But little did they know that Gaia is a world based on a novel from Earth. Rose, you should eat more vegetables. Your plate barely has any on it. Here, take some of mine. Nick pushed some of his vegetables off his plate onto Rose's own plate. Geez Nick, I was gonna eat more veggies later, Rose complained. Aren't you embarrassing yourself? A new voice said, making Rose stiffen. Everyone stopped eating. Excuse me, Rose said angrily, turning to face the source of the voice. Prince William was watching Rose and Nick's interaction. He couldn't stand any more of their behavior. It is such a nice saw. He ignored Rose and turned to Nick. Nick was facing the crown prince with no trace of expression. As her lover, aren't you disgusted with her eating all that meat? It seems that she gained a lot of weight from the last time I saw her. Is this prick calling me fat? Rose would have start growling if she was capable of it. You. A swipe of a prince, Rose banged her fist on the table and would have jumped over the table to beat the prince up if Nick hadn't grabbed her hand. William, that's enough, don't insult the savior of our kingdom. The king yelled out to his son, I'm not insulting her. I'm just stating a fact father. Prince Antonius as usual stayed silent, but he is giddy to watch more drama unfold. If only popcorn exists in Gaia. He would have kept munching on it. The queen on the other hand just looks so done. She covers her face with her hands. Why does her firstborn keep seeking trouble? You are wrong Prince William. Why would I be disgusted with my girl eating some more meat? Said Nick seriously. Well, Nick is it? Women shouldn't be eating all that meat. They should eat only vegetables so they can stay slim. Miss Rosalind used to be an attractively thin girl, but now her body has a form nearly of a cow. She will never be up to the standard of women if she keeps eating like that, said Prince William, talking in a matter-of-fact tone. A cow, Rose thought, insulted. If I'm a cow then you are a bean pole you ask. Nick gave an empty laugh. Standard of women you say? You are talking about your world's standard. In our world standard? Well there is actually no standard at all, stated Nick. What? Prince William, shocked from what he just heard, everyone keeps getting surprised, how can that be, 
This must mean that Gaia's women are far superior than your world's women, said Prince William arrogantly. No little prince, on earth. We don't care about standards. We care about women loving themselves, Nick replied with an imposing aura towards Prince William. Prince William felt a chill on his back with the way Nick looked at him. Nick was looking at him coldly, giving Prince William a feeling of fear. Impossible. Why would I fear this magic less nobody? The prince thought, knowing that Earth have no magic from that time at the throne room. Listen Prince Willie, I only care if my girl loves her own body. I think she is fine just the way she is. How she eats or whatever else she does is none of your business, Nick continued menacingly. The crown prince gulped and became silent once again, and if you think of looking at my girl's body, I will. Okay, I think that is enough lad, interrupted the king hesitantly to Nick, as the king, he should have punished this boy for insulting his son but, Rose. Sorry about that your majesty, I just had to defend my girl, said Nick in a not so sorry tone. He squeezes Rose's hand. Rose was silent during her boyfriend's exchange with the crown prince. She was watching Nick the whole time. If it was possible, she fell even more in love with him. Shortly after, the uncomfortable silence in the dining room returns and dinner was finished quickly without a word. Butler Michael came back and lead the two teenagers back to their room. Note, next chapter will have a discussion between the royal family members. The Royal Family edited the 4th of April 2023. After Rose and Nick left the dining room, the members of the Royal Family are left alone at the table. They hadn't decided to leave the dining room yet. William, I am very disappointed in you. I had told you to behave yourself and to not offend those two, the King told his firstborn angrily. I was not trying to offend them father. I don't know what you mean. I was merely stating a fact. Rosalind really did seem to get bigger. Prince William defended himself. Ha ha, Prince Antonius laughed out of nowhere. Prince William turned to his brother and glared at him. What's so funny brother? Prince William asked with an annoyed look. Nothing brother. Prince William squinted his eyes in suspicion towards his younger brother. You are an idiot, Prince Antonius thought with a smirk. William, I might really reconsider the crown prince position from you, the king said in a serious tone. What? Further no. Why would you think this? Prince William stood up from his chair abruptly and slammed his hands on the table. The chair tipped over backward and fell to the floor. Prince Antonius, who was just sipping wine, spat it out to the side when he heard what the king just said. The queen was also in a state of surprise. Why can't I get a break? If I keep getting surprised I might die of a heart attack, the queen thought in despair. Dear, why would you think of reconsidering William from being the crown prince? The queen questioned anxiously while grabbing the king's arm. Father, you said the same thing to me in the throne room just to shut me up. You are not serious right? Prince William said hesitantly. His father must be kidding. I'm dead serious boy. The king deadpanned. I just don't understand. Prince William began to shake in anger. What is it you don't understand boy? The king asked calmly. Why would you think of denying me as the crown prince? What have I done to receive this threat? You really don't know why? The king looked at Prince William with a are you dumb look. No, I don't know why. The king stood up from his chair, grabbed a pitcher of water and threw it to the floor. The pitcher broke into pieces and water spilled out. It's simply because of your behavior William. My behavior, murmured the prince with his brows scrunched up in confusion. You have been acting out of line today. Not like how a prince should be, the king yelled, sharply pointing at Prince William. No father, you are wrong. I have been behaving accordingly. It was you who has been behaving out of line, Prince William said disdainfully with arms crossed. What? The king couldn't believe his son had the audacity to talk back to him. You have not been behaving like a king. You let that girl walk all over you. Ever since she and her lover been summoned, you let that girl talk back to you and you didn't even punish her. It's like she rules over you instead of you ruling over her. Prince William had enough. It's because she is the savior of our kingdom. But still, you wouldn't cater to her whims before. Why don't you use force to control her? It's not that simple William. What do you mean father? I really can't deal with you. The king felt like giving up on his son. The queen and Prince Antonius just remained silent. Afraid to disrupt the fight between king and crown prince. You better listen well William. I will not repeat myself. If you are able to follow with what I say, I will reconsider taking the crown prince position from you. Will you listen this time? Prince William stood stock still and looked at the king expressionlessly. 
Okay, I will listen, he said after a moment. Everyone needs to do whatever they can to make Miss Rose happy. That girl alone decides our fates. Um, Prince Antonius started to speak. Yes Antonius, the king said, turning to look at his other son. Father, didn't you say that if she didn't save our kingdom, she couldn't go back to her other home? Wouldn't she have no choice in the matter? Prince Antonius said. Dot yes, but I need her to not go back to that place called Earth at all. If everyone makes her happy enough to stay in Gaia, I will be able to use that girl as my weapon. The queen and two princes looked at the king in confusion. A weapon for what? Prince William asked. A weapon to destroy the other kingdoms and build an empire. There is silence. Why would you need her as a weapon? She doesn't seem powerful. What if she really does have no magic? The queen asked. Even if she does not have magic, I have a hunch she could still be powerful in some way. After all, according to the oracle, the savior must be powerful. We will see if Miss Rose still have her water magic in her demonstration. I hope your hunch is correct father, said Prince William. Note, I apologize for publishing this chapter late. It took a lot of thinking for me to write this chapter. Bath Mild 18 Plus edited the 4th of April 2023. Warning, smart. Note, don't read if you feel uncomfortable with this chapter. This is my attempt at writing smut so I don't know if it's good or not. Any depictions of smut or sex is consensual. I hope you like this chapter. When Rose and Nick were brought back to their guest room, they saw some neatly folded clothing on the bed. Oh look Nick, I think the castle maids left us some night clothes, said Rose, holding a piece of old-fashioned style female pajamas. May, I'm not wearing it. I usually sleep in my boxer, said Nick. Shit, Rose exclaimed out of the blue. What's wrong? Nick asked in surprise. If the maids were in the room when we left, they had better not have touched my bag. Yes, when Rose and Nick were summoned, Rose had her handbag with her that is some of her things. Rose headed over to where she left her bag, which was unceremoniously left on the floor by the side of the bed. She grabbed it and rummaged through her bag, her iPhone and charger, check, her wallet with some cash and cards, check, pens and notepad, check, her keys, check, makeup items, check, peppermint trident gum check, Nintendo DS, check, BTS tickets, check, packs of condoms, check, Nick just had his wallet and smartphone in his back pockets, phew, nothing was taken, said Rose in relief, that's good, said Nick, yeah, got to make sure no one in this damn castle steals from me, suddenly Rose yawned, Nick, I think I will pause my storytelling right now, I will tell more of my story tomorrow, right now, I am just so mentally exhausted, okay babe, I also feel tired myself. Today was a long day. Definitely, Rose agreed. Let's wash the day off with a nice bath. The both of them decided to take a bath together. Dash smut scene. In the bathroom, there is a fancy looking tub. The loofah, soaps and bath oils are on the edge of the tub. After the bath tub became foamy with soap, Rose and Nick stripped naked. Without saying anything, they both checked each other out eyes filled with lust. Rose felt herself drool a bit when she looked at Nick's eight pack abs. To her, Nick has a perfect body. Not overly muscular or bulky. Lean but strong from doing martial arts and regular exercises. Nick just looks like a sculpted god to her. To Nick, Rose looks perfect. With nicely rounded breasts, small waist and toned legs from doing track and cheerleading. To him, Rose looks like a goddess. His goddess Rose slowly entered the tub first without breaking eye contact with Nick. Nick paid close attention to her every action. When she fully entered the tub, she made a come hither motion at Nick. Nick surprisingly made a sound like a growl. He slowly entered the tub. Rose moved to let him enter behind her so that she can lean on his chest. They both sighed in relaxation. Nick grabbed the loofah and began to wash Rose. He slowly dragged the loofah all over her body. He started with dragging the loofah from her collarbone and arms, then towards her chest. When the loofah reached her breasts, he gently rubbed the loofah over the two globes and her ankles. Rose gasped in pleasure because of the sensitive sensation. Nick then dragged the loofah downwards to her stomach, which Rose is a bit ticklish so she giggled a bit. When he continued to drag the loofah lower until it covers her most private area, he slowly rubbed her down there, making Rose moan. A bit later the loofah was replaced with two of his fingers. Nick began pumping his fingers inside her, even brushing against her clitoris. With his other hand, he held one of her breasts and massages it. Her nerves went on overdrive. Ah, 
Nick, oh my god, that feels so good. Rose moaned so loudly that probably the entire castle can hear her, which she doesn't care. Yeah? Then this will make you feel even better, Nick said huskily with darkened eyes. When Nick did the scissoring motion with his fingers inside her, it drove her over the edge. He also pinches and rubs her nipples his skilled musician hands playing with them like a string instrument. Nick then covered her mouth with his when Rose began to moan even louder. Then they both started French kissing. It is not long until Rose climaxed from the foreplay. That. Huff. Was. Huff. Amazing. Now it's your turn, said Rose, high from her pleasure. So Rose took the loofah from her boyfriend's hand and dragged it slowly over Nick's body. The same pace he did hers. She gently rubbed his penis with it, even circling around it, which made Nick hiss in pleasure. Soon the loofah is replaced with her hands. She gently and slowly massaged his balls, making Nick moan. When her hand touched his penis, she grabbed it and started pumping him. When she pumped him faster, Nick felt like he is losing the edge of his sanity and gave an animalistic-like growl. He soon released his load into her hands. Now they are both extremely satisfied. After making sure they are both completely clean, they left the bathtub and help each other dry themselves. Soon, they both laid in bed naked. Rose had her hair still wrapped in a towel. They laid facing each other on the bed staring at each other's eyes. I love you Nick, said Rose affectionately. I love you Rose, said Nick in the same tone. Soon, they both fell asleep in each other's arms. Leaving the castle edited the 4th of April 2023. Knock knock knock. A groan is heard in the room. Um, Ms. Rose, I am one of the royal maids. I am here to bring a change of clothes. The maid outside the door said, and kept knocking on the door. Uck, just five more minutes. Mom, Rose groaned out, and turned round on the bed for a more comfortable position. Miss Rose, please wake up. If you hadn't already yet, I must take you to the dining room to have breakfast. Then His Majesty will have a coachman ready for you to leave the castle for your departure. Shit. Rose jolted awake and sat up from the bed abruptly, disturbing Nick from his slumber. Uck. Nick groaned out at the sudden movement. I want to sleep some more, he said groggily. Nick, we are about to leave this damn place soon. Come on get up. The sooner we eat breakfast, the sooner we are out of this hellhole. Rose started to shake Nick. Uck. Okay I'm up. Nick opened his eyes and gave a stretch. Miss Rose, please open the door if we are awake, just give us a minute. Rose rushed into the bathroom to grab bathrobes. When she came out, she stumbled a bit when she saw Nick stood up on the side of the bed in his naked glory. God damn, Rose said looking at his body. She shook her head to dispel her pivy thoughts. Here Nick, Rose threw the bathrobe at Nick, which he caught. Thanks Rose, he said gratefully. After they are both dressed in their bathrobes. Rose opened the door. Hello. Thank you for waiting. It was hard to wake up from such a comfy bed, Rose said to the maid with a friendly expression. Oh, no need to thank me Miss Rose. I am just a maid, said the maid, who looks to be very young, maybe around Rose's age. She has blonde hair tied into a bun and brown eyes. Even if you are a maid, I appreciate your patience, said Rose gratefully. Oh thank you Miss. The maid was surprised at her kindness. I'll take that away from you. Rose took the basket with the neatly folded clothes from the maid's hands. Um, the maid wanted to say something. Yes, I also have to wash the clothes you and Cernielo swore the day before and to make the room presentable. I will have your clothes ready before your departure. Oh, okay. Here, just come in the room. The maid entered the room and looked around. The room wasn't too messy, just some clothes lying on the floor and an unkempt bed. When the maid saw Nick, she blushed uncontrollably from seeing his chest uncovered from the bathrobe. Nick didn't notice. He was just rubbing his face to make himself more awake. Meanwhile, Rose was just picking up her and Nick's clothes and putting it in the basket she took from the maid. She made sure all their other stuff is in her large handbag. Oh Miss Rose, you don't have to do that. The maid exclaimed. It's fine. My mum taught me to pick after myself. Rose stated. She handed the maid the basket of dirty clothes. By the way, what is your name? Rose asked the maid. Um, my name is Angela. The maid is again surprised. Usually no one bothers to know the name of a lowly maid. Thank you again, Angela. Dash. After changing into their new clothes and making sure they look presentable, Angela lead the two lovers to the dining room for breakfast. Angela went away to wash their clothes. 
Of course, the royal family is there at the dining table. Everyone sat in the same seating arrangement as the other night. Good morning Miss Rose and Sernia Laws. How are you this fine morning? The king greeted them cheerfully. I'm feeling great, said Rose, also cheerfully. I'm fine, was all Nick said. Nix began to dig into his English breakfast. Oh, why is that Miss Rose? The king asked curiously. Because we are leaving this place. The royal family was speechless from Rose's continued boldness. Prince William seems to not be hearing anything as he is looking down at his food, but he is furiously cutting and stabbing the sausages on his plate and viciously chewing it in his mouth. The queen and Prince Antonius paused from their eating. The queen nervously glanced at her husband while Prince Antonius has the here we go again slash I am so done look. The king coughed. Well Miss Rose, I have the coachman waiting at the entrance to bring the both of you to your new home. So when you both are finished with your breakfast, Michael will escort you there. That is good, said Rose and resumed eating. Everyone stayed silent for the rest of breakfast time. It was not a completely comfortable silence but better than the night before. Dash. Meanwhile, in the royal laundry room, the maid Angela looked over the clothes in the basket. She picked up Nick's pink Floyd the dark side of the moon t-shirt. I have never seen clothing like this. Why would a shirt have some weird symbol? Angela thought curiously. Is Miss Rose's lover a cultist? She thought in fear. Hey Angie. Whose shirt you are holding, said a maid nearby doing Prince William's laundry, it's one of our guests, the male one, Angela replied, huh, why would a shirt look like that and have a weird looking symbol on it, could that person be a mage, the other maid asked, I don't know Martha, all these clothes are strange, said Angela gesturing to the basket of clothes, dash, after breakfast is done, butler Michael appeared before the teen lovers, glad you are here Michael. Escort these two youngsters to the coachman, said the king. I will your majesty, said Butler Michael. I will see you both again at the demonstration in a week. I hope to see you showcase your magic Miss Rose, said the king. I doubt I have any magic but whatever. I will see you then your majesty, said Rose in a do not care attitude. This girl is a total headache, the king thought in annoyance. After she is gone, peace will be back once again within the castle. Farewell for now Miss Rose and Cernia Laws, he said. Goodbye to the both of you, said the Queen. See you next week, said Prince Antonius. Prince William looks to the side and stayed silent. He doesn't bother saying goodbye. The Queen gave him a glance of disappointment. See you later, said Rose. Peace out, said Nick and saluted with two fingers to his forehead. Butler Michael took the teens away to the entrance. Does peace out also means goodbye where they came from? If it is, I'm going to say that as a farewell from now on, said Prince Antonius out of the blue. Prince William glared at his brother when he said that, which the second prince pretend not to notice. Dash. At the entrance, the teens saw Angela waiting with a basket of their cleaned clothes. Here you go Miss Rose, all nice and fresh, said Angela. Thank you Angela, that was quick stated Rose. I have to go back. Thank you again for your kindness Miss Rose. You're welcome Angela. Angela then left. Outside, they saw the coachman waiting and sitting at the front of the carriage. The carriage is pulled by two horses, it's been a pleasure to see you again Miss Rose, said Butler Michael. Likewise, said Rose. May I speak to you young lad, just man to man, Butler Michael asked Nick. Um, okay, said Nick. Both men went to stand a distance away from Rose. I am glad that Miss Rose found a nice young man to care for her, please take care for her well, Butler Michael said to Nick. Yes, definitely man, Nick replies. And you also must protect her at all cost. There is danger everywhere. I feel that you are very capable even if you don't have magic, Butler Michael said seriously. Nick gave a serious expression. I don't have magic, but I will use whatever I have to protect Rose. Rose is my life. You are good for her, stated Butler Michael. I will let you both go now. I have to return to my duties. The males return back to Rose. Goodbye Miss Rose. I have to go. I will see you on your demonstration, Butler said to Rose. Bye Michael, see you next week, said Rose. Butler Michael then went back inside the castle. Hey Nick, what did Michael say to you? Rose asked when she saw Nick came back to her side. He said that I am a nice man and that I am good for you, Nick replied. Oh, okay, that's nice of him to say that. Guess Michael is the only person in this world I shouldn't hate, stated Rose. Are you youngsters ready to go? 
The coachman called from the front of the carriage. Yes we are ready. Both other welders said simultaneously. Rose clutches Nick's arm and they both look at each other. We are finally out of here, she said. Analyze edited the 4th of April 2023. After breakfast, the king went to his study and Prince William followed him. Father, I want to visit Analyze today, said Prince William. Miss Burton, I believe she is still in a coma. There hasn't been reports of her waking up yet, said the king thoughtfully. Maybe she will wake up today. May I have your permission to go see her father? It has been a week since I seen her, but every day away from her makes me more anxious. Prince William pleaded. The king stared at William. Since the saintess was in a coma, his son used to visit her every chance he can get. It kept distracting William from his crown prince duties so he forced his son to stop and only ask his permission to visit Miss Barton. He sighed at Prince William's desperate expression. All right, I will allow you to go visit Miss Barton today. Dash. Later, Prince William entered his personal carriage. Take me to the holy temple. He ordered the coachman. Yes your highness, said the coachman. The carriage then left the castle towards the holy temple. Dash. It was only a short while before Prince William made it to the temple. There are guards of the temple standing outside the entrance. Recognizing the carriage, the guards became more alert. Greetings your highness Prince William. The two guards said simultaneously and kneeled on the ground when they saw the prince get out of the carriage. Rise, said Prince William. Call for the head priest to receive me. Right away your highness, said the guards. One of the guards went inside the temple to find the head priest. In the short time, an old man in a white religious looking robe ran to receive the crown prince. He turns out to be the head priest. I greet your highness Prince William, the head priest said as he huffed from exhaustion and kneeled. How may I be of service to you? You know why I'm here, said Prince William coldly. How is her condition? The head priest looked down in fear. Her condition is stable but unfortunately she had not woken up yet your highness, the head priest said with a sweat. Prince William clenched his fists. Take me to her, he ordered. Dash. Inside the holy temple, there is an enormous room with only one figure inside. The figure is a girl laying on a humongous king-size bed. The doors opened, and Prince William rushed in. As he got closer to the bed, Prince William had his eyes all over the girl. The girl looks like a sleeping beauty. She has a heart-shaped face, pouty lips, and long eyelashes. Her hair is reddish-brown, with straight bangs framing her forehead. The rest of her hair is very long in length, as it spread over the bed. The blanket covers up to the middle of her chest. The girl's arms on the other hand are not covered by the blanket. Oh Analyze, Prince William cried out and grabbed one of the girl's hands. Please wake up my love. I can't bear to be away from you. I wish to see your beautiful violet eyes again, the prince said desperately. The comatose girl still doesn't show any sign of life. Prince William sighed in sadness and decided to just lay next to the girl. He wrapped his arms around her and hid his face buried in her neck. It has been a long time since I can be this close to you. I miss you so much my future queen. You won't believe what has happened in the last few days, he murmured to the girl's ear. About a few days ago. He continued, Father had a mage summoned a new savior of our kingdom. Still no reaction from the unconscious girl. The savior was to be your replacement, but no one can ever replace you my dear Analyze. Still no reaction from the girl. The savior summoned turns out to be someone from a different world, but that is not the most shocking thing that occurred. No response still. The most shocking thing, is that this so-called new savior of our kingdom, is none other than the duke's daughter Rosalind Mayers. Can't you believe it? That wicked girl that bullied you is somehow still alive after I had her executed about a month ago. One of the unconscious girl's fingers twitched without the prince noticing. She is somehow back from the dead. I must find out how. She must be a wicked witch who placed a spell on herself before her execution to live. She is an absolute threat to your position. I promise I will get to the bottom of this. No one can ever take your place, especially her. Prince William promised himself. He looked longingly at Analyze's still sleeping face. I hope you wake up soon so that we can both show father that the kingdom does not need that evil girl. You are the true savior of the Solaris kingdom Analyze, my one and only love. Worry edited the 4th of April 2023. While Prince William tells all that has happened in the last few days and his woes to the comatose heroine, let's get back to our MCs. Dash. 
Rose and Nick had been traveling in their carriage away from the king's castle. Hello Mr. Coachman. Rose poked her head out the carriage window and called out to the coachman in the front. Yes my lady. The coachman, who looks to be a middle-aged man, replied looking over his shoulder. How far is our destination? Rose asked. We are almost there my lady. Just about 20 minutes more. No need to call me my lady, just call me Rose. The coachman glanced back at her with an uncertain look. At the same time he has to watch the road, but that is not appropriate, he said. I insist, said Rose, I am not a duke's daughter anymore. Um, okay Miss Rose, the coachman agreed hesitantly. Rose ducked her head back inside the carriage. So, how long until we reach our destination? Nick asked once Rose sat back down next to him. The coachman said about 20 minutes. Oh, that's not long. I have been looking at the time and it seems we have been traveling for almost half an hour. Were you looking at the time on your phone or watch? Rose asked her boyfriend. I was looking at my watch. I was afraid to look at my phone or else I will see the battery percentage. I understand how you feel. Rose sympathized. My phone is at 35% charge. Unfortunately in this world, there is no way we can recharge our phones as far as I know. Our phones are currently useless and dying. Nick stated. Yep, Rose agreed, popping the P sound. Well, Nick began. This would have been a first world problem if we were back on Earth. Too bad this is not Earth, Rose said tonelessly. This really is a bummer, we can't call or text, watch videos, or in general know anything that's going on back on Earth. I'm worried about our family and friends back home knowing that we are missing, Nick admitted his distress while looking down on his lap. Oh Nick, Rose threw herself at Nick and hugged him tightly, I'm worried about them too, all the people I care about is back on earth, I promise, as the prophesied savior of this damn world, I will have us go back home no matter what, we cannot be stuck here forever, not just you, huh? Rose has a questioning look, staring at Nick, you don't have to go at it alone, said Nick, looking back at Rose, as your boyfriend, I will always have your back, I will protect you, Nick said, smiling. He hugged Rose back tightly. Nick, let's not lose hope, said Rose also smiling with tears in her eyes. Yes, Nick agreed. Oh, I just remembered something, Rose suddenly exclaimed. She reached under their seat and pulled out a black wooden box. Question mark Nick. Noble carriages usually have a snack box here in Gaia. Rose had the box on her lap and showed the contents to Nick. Inside there are bags of nuts, cookies, crackers, and candied fruit. Let's enjoy these for the rest of the trip, said Rose happily. Sure, Nick agreed. The two enjoyed the snacks, even feeding each other while on their way to their destination. And so, for the rest of the carriage ride is just contentment with the two people inside. New Home edited the 4th of April 2023. The carriage finally reached its destination. We are finally here Miss Rose and Cernia Laws, the coachman called behind him. Huh? Rose said in a daze. We are already here? She was slumped in her seat, taking a short nap before being woken up. Get up lazy boom, we made it. Rose gave a few taps on Nick's shoulder. Nick was just dozing off with his head on her lap. Huh? We are already here? He asked groggily. Yes, Rose replied. Let's go see our new home. She ended sarcastically. After stretching their bodies, both teens got off the carriage. Thank you kind sir for the ride, Rose told the coachman. Yes, thank you for the ride sir. Nick also thanked the coachman. Oh um, you're welcome Miss Rose and Cernia Laws, the coachman said. He couldn't believe that the back from the dead former fiancé of the crown prince had been so nice to him. He had been hearing rumors that she was an evil woman but she had been nothing but kind to him the entire ride. When Rose turned her head after the coachman left to look at their house, she was caught by surprise. What? I said I wanted a house. She exclaimed, eyes wide in disbelief at what she saw. What's wrong babe? Nick asked before turning around to see where his girlfriend is looking at. Whoa. He showed the same reaction as Rose. I thought the king will give me a normal village house or a cottage. Rose said, feeling exasperated. Well, it is definitely much better than what you thought. Nick whistled in appreciation at the sight of their new dwelling. In front of them is a large mansion. I think this seems fishy, said Rose narrowing her eyes in suspicion. Yeah, Nick agreed, that sus king gave us a huge ass mansion that seems over the top. Yeah, the mansion is even bigger than my sperm donor's estate. Just what is that damn king up to? Is he trying to please me? If so, Rose gave a huff and crossed her arms. 
The king is trying too damn hard. Hey, this will be our home in this fantasy world right? So even though we have our suspicions, let's just take advantage while we can, Nick suggested. I guess, Rose gave a sigh, since the king is so kind to give this mansion as our place to live. It seems that there is someone already at the gate. Nick pointed out seeing a figure of a person standing in front of the mansion's gate. Let's head over. Note, I don't know how to describe architecture and I'm not up for doing research on it. Just know that the mansion is extremely extravagant looking. Sebastian Michaelis edited the 26th of November 2023. As the teens walk closer to the gate, they saw a man in a butler uniform. Seeing the face of the butler, Rose became surprised. Omg, um, Sebastian Michaelis is that you? She gasped out. The butler gave a surprised look, while Nick gave a confused look at her exclamation. Lady Rose and Cernia Laws, I have been awaiting your arrival. My name is Sebastian McCain, your butler. May I ask how Lady Rose knew my first name? The butler asked politely. Ah, uh, I thought you were someone else I know, Rose replied sheepishly scratching the back of her head. Upon a closer look. The butler Sebastian McCain looks exactly like Sebastian Michaelis from the anime Black Butler, except his eyes are brown, not red. Also, he seems to have a soft demeanor instead of a bloodthirsty or like the character in the anime. Basically, Sebastian McCain is a very handsome butler. Sebastian continued his introduction. Nick, seeing Rose's stare at the butler became a bit jealous. I see. Well... Welcome to the Evergarden Mansion. This mansion will be your home for your duration of your stay. However long it will be, His Majesty gifted this mansion to you, Lady Rose, the savior of our kingdom. As your butler, I will give you the tour of the mansion and help you both get you settled, said Sebastian. Okay, first a huge mansion, and now an Ikeman butler. What else the king is trying to impress me with, Rose thought. Would you like to have a tour now, or... Would you like to have some food and refreshments outside on the patio that the maids and I set up for you to enjoy this fine weather? Sebastian asked. So we have maids too, huh? What do you want to do first Nick? Do you want to eat first or take the tour? Rose asked her boyfriend. It doesn't matter. I'm fine with whatever you decide since I don't feel too hungry yet, Nick replied. Oh, okay. I feel a bit hungry but I can wait to eat later. Let's take the tour first, Rose told Sebastian. All right my lady and Cernia laws, said Sebastian, follow me. Sebastian turned his back and headed straight towards inside the mansion. The teen couple walk behind him and hold each other's hands. Who is Sebastian Michaelis and should I be jealous? Nick asked jokingly but also maybe a bit seriously. He is just a character from a show I used to watch. There is no need to be jealous I have only eyes for you. Rose said lovingly looking into Nick's eyes, is it anime? Yeah, okay, Nick was introduced to some anime by Rose, he likes some of the shows, he doesn't watch as much anime as Rose though. Rose on the other hand is a big fan. One of her most favorite shows is Demon Slayer. Nick gave her hand an affectionate squeeze. They both then just continued to walk forward in comfortable silence. Note, I will post another chapter later today. Tour of Evergarden Mansion edited the 26th of November 2023. Note, as of the 26th of November 2023 chapters were combined to make one long one. Rose, Nick, and Sebastian stood before the mansions in Drance Way. Already, there are maids lined up to greet their mistress and master. There are five maids in total. Lady Rose and Cernia Laws. The ladies here are your maids Emily, Diane, Evie, Meredith, and Freya. Sebastian introduces, welcome Lady Rose and Cernia Laws. The maids greeted them. Thank you, Rose and Nick greeted back at the same time. It's nice to meet you ladies, please take care of us, Rose added. The maids seems to look shocked at her kindness. They didn't expect a former duke's daughter to be so nice. Yes we will my lady, the maids replied simultaneously. Let's keep going ahead, said Sebastian. With that, Rose and Nick finally entered the Evergarden Mansion. Dash. Sebastian went through the entire mansion with them. The Evergarden Mansion is pretty huge with beautiful decor, and has a lot of different rooms. There are bedrooms, guest rooms, bathrooms, a large kitchen, a dining room, a sunroom, a greenhouse, a game room, a study room, a drawing room, a music room, a art room, a sewing room, and a ballroom.
There are just so many rooms for the two teenagers to wrap their head around. Along the way, Rose and Nick met their personal chef Pete and an old gardener named Ray. Right now, Sebastian is showing them one final room, the library. So this room here is the library. Sebastian opened the library doors wide. Rose and Nick's jaws dropped in shock. It's a huge ass library. Jesus fucking Christ. There's so many books here. Rose exclaimed with her hands on her cheeks, sperm donor got nothing on this. Wow, just wow, was all Nick said with a look of awe. Butler not Sebastian Mike Haley's, upon hearing Rose's colorful choice of words, gave a cry of disbelief. Lady Rose, that is very inappropriate for you to say. He exclaimed with his hands in the air, and who is Jesus and Christ? Um, just famous names from Earth. Have the king told you anything about us? Rose asked Sebastian sheepishly. Yes. His Majesty told me that you were summoned from another world, Sebastian confirmed carefully. Anyway, this library has like what, a million books or something? It's like it has every piece of knowledge and literature in Gaia. You are correct my lady, confirmed Sebastian. What? Really? This library is modeled after the Solaris Royal Library. All these books are the exact copies of all the books found there. This is just over the top Sebastian. What's the deal with the king giving us this mansion to live in? It is big as hell with so many rooms, extravagant decor, and now this overstocked library. This seems ridiculous. All I asked for is a simple house. So what's the deal? Rose did not expect Sebastian to know the answer. She is just feeling overwhelmed. Sebastian was silent for a moment just staring at Rose. Nick was silent too and staring at the both of them. The Evergarden mansion was meant for Prince William and Lady Annalise, he said. What? This mansion belongs to William and Annalise. I cannot accept this. Do you see how weird this is? Rose threw her hands up in the air in anger. What do you think Nick? Rose asked her boyfriend. This is totally weird. Nick agreed. Does that prince know that the king is making us live in his son's and Annalise's home? Rose asked Sebastian. Actually, Prince William currently did not know about this mansion's existence, Sebastian said, sweating behind his neck. He did not know. Rose worded out slowly. His Majesty the King was going to gift this mansion as a wedding gift for when the royal couple goes on their getaways instead of staying at the castle. The building of this mansion was completed about a week ago. But since Lady Annalise was comatose and the unexpected summoning of you both, the king still hadn't revealed the mansion's existence to his highness, said Sebastian. So the king gave us this, honeymoon mansion instead of a simple village house without thought. Guess it shows he is trying to go on my good graces, Rose deadpanned and internally cringed. Um, Sebastian was speechless, you know what, this is quite amusing. It's great that the king is trying to please us for whatever reasons. I deserve this right? Rose said arrogantly, crossing her arms with a smirk. Sebastian was surprised by her change of attitude. My lady, are you fine with this? Sebastian asked cautiously. Yes, now please let's finish this tour and lead us to the patio so we can have something to eat. I am getting a bit more famished, Rose said with some authority. As you wish my lady, said Sebastian. The three left the library and headed to see other rooms. Rose and Nick walked behind Sebastian. They are far enough behind the butler for them to whisper secretly. Nick, I think the king is definitely scheming something, Rose whispers. I think so too. And the butler might not be trustworthy. We should keep our guards up, whispers Nick. Yeah, Rose agreed. We should act like we accept everything they gave us so that they won't suspect that we are onto them. Right. Nick agreed. They both stopped whispering to each other and just silently continuing following the butler. Note, I realized I hadn't mentioned the name of the kingdom Rose is supposed to save. It's called the Solaris Kingdom. Rose was summoned to save the Solaris Kingdom in the world of Gaia. There are other kingdoms but Solaris is the important one. Past Part 5, The Academy edited the 11th of June 2023. To my previous readers. This chapter as on the 11th of June 2023 is a combination of four chapters into one. Sebastian lead the two teenagers to the patio. There is a table there with food already set up. Again, the dishes consisted of a mix of familiar British and French foods, which is likely common in the Solaris Kingdom. Rose saw that there are too much food again that her and Nick will be unable to finish. Her old self will see it as something normal, but her current self sees this as a waste. 
she will have to talk to Sebastian about decreasing the amount of foods on the table. Please help yourselves and enjoy the scenery my lady and Cernia Laws, said Sebastian. Thank you, said the couple. There were only two chairs on opposite ends of the table in which Rose and Nick took a seat, as I have other duties to complete. May I ask my lady to allow me to depart? Sebastian asked. Sure, you can leave Sebastian. You don't have to ask because I understand you have tasks, Rose said kindly. Sebastian was again surprised by her kindness. Um, thank you my lady. Have a good day Lady Rose and Cernia Laws. Sebastian then left the couple alone. See you around Sebastian, said Rose. See you later my man, said Nick. Rose sighed. Finally, Nick also sighed and slumped a bit on his chair. He laid his elbow on the arm of the chair and crossed his long legs. I think today is another long day, said Nick. I think so too. So now that we are alone again, do you want to continue telling me about your past while we eat? Nick asked Rose carefully. Rose was looking at the different dishes on the table when Nick asked his question. She slowly looked back at Nick with an unreadable expression. Yes, I will tell you some more of my past. Dash the past. When she began to enter school. The Duke ordered Rose to spend as much time with Prince William as much as possible. Rose didn't complain. Ever since Prince William said that he hoped they become friends, Rose couldn't stop thinking about him. Prince William would be her first ever friend. The school she is going to enter is called the Belfast Academy. The age to start entering the academy is 10 years old, and students graduate in 6 years. The academy mostly accepts students of any social class but there is an obvious hierarchy within the school. Students are required to live in dorms and only go back home during holidays, vacations, or emergencies. When the mayor's carriage dropped her off at the front gates of the academy, Rose was a nervous wreck. She was dropped off half hour before the start of orientation so she saw that there were many students hanging out on the academy grounds. Rose nervously pulled the sleeve of her uniform and is carrying some books. Behind her is a maid pulling on the carrier for her luggage. Rose decided to try to find Prince William. She slowly walked through the masses of students loitering outside and looks around for the prince. If she can't find him outside, then he is already in the school. While she walked past, the students who saw and recognized her began to gossip. Hey, I know who that girl is. Isn't that Sir Tristan's younger sister? The one who caused the death of the late Duchess Maya? I heard that she is Prince William's fiancé. She doesn't look that pretty. I wonder what her magic ability will be? Will she be strong like her brother? Those students didn't bother to keep quiet. So Rose heard every single word. She is most affected by whoever said that she caused her mother's death. I did not cause my mother's death. She mumbled angrily. She wanted to find out who said that and confront them but knows it is unbecoming of a lady. So she decides to ignore the people around her and continue looking for Prince William. There is too much area to cover. Rose thought as she is having a hard time finding the prince, but it seems that luck is finally on her side. Rose finally found Prince William leaning on a tree, but he is not alone. The prince seems to be surrounded by many girls and some boys. The boys seem to be his friend though as they stood closer to the prince's being and are seen to be having conversations with him. The girls on the other hand stood a good distance away from the boys, jiggling like mad and staring at Prince William with love-struck faces, suddenly becoming excited at seeing her friend. Rose began to shout, Prince William, Prince William. Rose yelled happily, forgetting to keep an image. The maid behind her tried to keep up with her while dragging the luggage. Lady Rosalind wait. The maid yelled out. The ruckus generated the attention of everyone within the vicinity. Prince William stopped talking to his friends and turned to the source of the voice. He saw Rose running over towards him and his eyes widened. Rosalind? Rose shuffled her way through the throngs of girls. Hey! One girl yelled when Rose pushed her. Watch it! Another girl shouted. Ow! That is not nice. Rose was finally in Prince William's field of vision. Prince William, I am so glad I found you. Rose huffed out. Oh Miss Rose, you are here? Prince William said with a smile that seems off. I am so happy to see you again. It has been a few months since we last met. Today is my first day at the academy. We are in the same year aren't we Prince William? Rose asked, ignoring the stares of the other people. Oh, I guess we are. Prince William gave a fake cough and turned his head to the side. I'm only a couple of months older than you after all. That means we might be seeing each other a lot right? I hope we have the same classes together. This is so exciting Rose was suddenly cut off. Rosalind, you are embarrassing yourself. 
a new voice said harshly. Rose turned to the source of the voice and paled in fear. Tristan, she gasped out, seeing her brother. The younger carbon copy of Duke Mayers pushed through the crowd of girls and stomp angrily towards her and grabbed her painfully by the arm. Ow! Rose cried out. Your Highness Prince William, began Tristan, ignoring Rose. I apologize that my sister is bothering you and interrupted your peaceful time. I shall take her aside and remind her the correct behavior, he told the prince respectfully. Oh Tristan it's good to see you, Prince William greeted happily. Your sister wasn't a bother at all, she was just happy to see me, her fiancé. The girls watching the spectacle and hearing what was said by the prince, glared hatefully at Rose who unfortunately noticed and gulped. Oh right, Tristan said without a hint of emotion, but he squeezed Rose's arm more which made her wince. Rose stayed silent, afraid to raise anyone's ire as she seems to keep doing. You should let go of your sister, you know she's harmless, Prince William said factually, looking at Tristan's hold on her. Tristan glanced at Rose and scoffed. Yes of course your highness, Tristan let go of Rose and shove her away from him. Ah. Rose almost stumbled but was able to catch herself. Prince William chuckled. I told you to call me William. You are my friend after all. But that's inappropriate your highness. Prince William rolled his eyes. He walked towards Tristan and slapped him good-naturedly on the back. I should have known there is no change in your mind. Come, let's head inside the academy and catch up a bit before orientation starts. As if he finally noticed her presence, Prince William turned to Rose. It's nice to see you again my fiancé, we will be seeing each other in our classes, was all he said to her. Why yes your highness Prince William, I'm happy to see you again. I hope to see you in class, Rose said enthusiastically. Prince William just nodded at her. Let's head in, he said to Tristan and started walking towards the entrance of the academy. Tristan followed suit but not before giving Rose a glare. I will have a word with you later. He said to her coldly once Prince William is out of earshot. Both boys left, leaving Rose with a bunch of angry noble girls. Dash back to the present. Uck I really hated the way I acted in the past. Rose groaned with her hands covering her face. You were just a kid though. Nick pointed out. Yeah but I was stupid, gullible, and naive. And it gets worse the more I tell you. I really hated my past self said Rose despairingly. It is hard for Rose to talk about her life. How about this, you don't have to tell me everything, hell, you don't have to tell me anything else and just stop telling your story here, Nick suggested gently. What? Rose abruptly looked at Nick in shock, but I feel like you should know, didn't you want to know about my past? Yes I do not gonna lie, but if telling me about your life gives you pain then don't say anything more, Nick said firmly, I just think telling you this will help you understand me better said Rose quietly. I think I know about you enough to understand you, so if you don't want to tell me any more about your life in this world you don't have to. I don't want you to suffer any more, Nick said the last part strongly. Rose was speechless. I will tell you everything eventually edited the 4th of April 2023. Rose thought deeply of what Nick said. It seems that it doesn't bother him that she might not tell him more about her past life. She can't believe she have such an understanding boyfriend. How can she be so lucky? Most guys are not like Nick whether on earth or Gaia. She is lucky to have Nick in her life. All right Nick, I have decided to not talk any more about my past, Rose said after a moment of silence between the two. Rose closely looked at Nick's face. She expected to see an expression of disappointment but saw none. Okay that is cool with me, Nick responded calmly with a shrug and just grabbed a teacup and took a sip. But I still want you to know. Rose continued. Nick gave a look of shock. Look Rose, like I said I heard enough of what you told me about your past. I will tell you everything. Rose cut him off. Huh? Confusion marred Nick's face. Not now, but someday. No, I will tell you everything once we get back home, Rose said with determination. Rose, it seems his girlfriend keeps surprising him. Or maybe I will write about it. Oh wait, there is kind of already a book about it. What do you mean? Nick questions curiously. It's that novel I found randomly at the bookstore. That actually seems to be based my life. That sounds very sus, said Nick. By the time we get back home to Earth, I believe I will have the full confidence to finish my story and I will show you that book. I can let everything out to you and give myself the closure I needed. Right now, our lives are too disrupted. Rose finished with a harsh breath of air. 
Okay Rose if you are sure. I don't want you to feel pressured to tell me anything more, said Nick worryingly. Yes Nick, I'm sure. All right. Rose suddenly gave Nick a heated look. Hey Nick, I don't think I ever showed enough of how grateful I am to have an understanding boyfriend like you. How about I show it to you tonight? Nick stared at her blankly and he seems to be stiff like a statue, but one part of him is trying to break free of his stiffness. The little guy hidden by his pants. Passionate Night 18 Plus edited the 4th of April 2023. Warning, smut for 18 plus, do not read if uncomfortable. I am not used to writing smut. This is my attempt. After Rose opened up her feelings with Nick, they both just talked about random things for the rest of the day. They also talked about their family and their lives back on Earth. In this opulent mansion, there is actually not much of anything to do to occupy their minds. There is only the library filled with books to read. And maybe Rose can practice on her cooking skills more in the kitchen or Nick can try out the music room. But basically not much else to do. Their phones don't work in this world so without the use of technology, the two teens felt an emptiness that hits too hard. First world problems right there. This is typical of a person from the 21st century on earth in the age of technology. But there is still one more way to occupy their time. Nighttime. Nick groaned. It was now night. The lovers are now in their rooms, all of their clothing discarded. Right now, Nick is laying on the bed with his hands outstretched to grab Rose's head. Meanwhile, Rose is busy giving Nick her award for being an amazing boyfriend. Uck, fuck. Nick growled out in a haze of pleasure. He pushed his DCK more into Rose's mouth. Suck me harder, he demanded. Where did the nice easy going Nick go? Rose stopped sucking and smirked. White substance is dripping down her chin. Nah ah, I gotta leave you still in need so that I can take it to the next level, said Rose seductively. With that, she started to climb over Nick's legs. Rose began riding Nick. Fucking hell, Nick shouted, feeling immense pleasure. Oh fuck, Rose said loudly, then moaned out her pleasure. They are both probably waking up the servants with all the noise. Who knows how long Rose stayed on top of Nick until they both ended up spurting out their release. Rose tired herself out and laid on her stomach on Nick's chest and thought this was the end of it. Until Nick caught her by surprise and flipped her over on the bed. We are far from done you vixen, Nick said lowly in a dark seductive tone. His grey eyes had darkened to look completely black in the night. Seeing his expression, Rose gulped in anticipation. Let's take it to another level. Repeating what Rose said, Nick grabbed both her legs and rammed his DCK into her. Hard, Rose screamed. Nick began pumping in and out of Rose, making her writhed on the bed in another wave of pleasure. Fuck. It's so good. Harder Nick. Harder. Rose is a type of person who likes it rough. You want it. You got it. Nick reached out his hands to grab Rose's breasts and knead them. Rose crosses her legs around Nick's waist, bringing him closer to her body. Nick brought his meat stick deeper into her core. Nick kept fucking his girlfriend until they both climaxed again. Again? Nick asked. Again, Rose agreed. Another round of lovemaking commenced. And another. And another. It took a while until they are both now completely tired. They two lovers ended up just laying on the bed side by side. Ha! I can never compete with your stamina Nick. I will never know where you get all that energy, Rose said teasingly while trying to catch her breath. What are you talking about? You are the one who keeps leaving me breathless, Nick replied back. Also teasing, Rose yawned. I love you Nick, Rose mumbled as she closed her eyes. She rolled to her side facing Nick. I love you Rose. Nick rolled to his side to face Rose and draped his arm over her. He also closed his eyes. They welcomed the wonderful world of dreamland. Note, I hope this is a good smut scene. I am not used to writing erotic stuff but maybe in time I will get better. Prince William Seeks the King edited the 4th of April 2023. Father, I wish to speak with you regarding Rosalind. Prince William said, finding the king in his study. The king was just writing on a piece of parchment with his quill but paused his action when he heard his son spoke from the doorway and looked up. The girl's name is now Rosemary. She emphasized it multiple times back at the throne room. I record you with her listening to the whole thing unless your ears need to be checked my son, the king replied. Prince William scoffed and walked closer to the king's desk and sat on the chair across it with his arms crossed. She says otherwise but obviously she is still Rosalind said Prince William carelessly, you better be careful with what you say around the girl, we need her help to save our kingdom, 
The king warned her help. How can she help when she said herself that she is useless? Well, even more useless than when she had her weak water magic. Now she has no magic at all. The prince suddenly exclaimed, throwing her hands up in the air. You don't know that. She could still have her magic. I highly doubt it because she said that she was reborn. The prince countered. Yes. I remember she did say that. The king muttered in thought. Yes. She said she was reborn, maybe you need to get your ears checked farther because she definitely said she was reborn, I believe to a world called Earth, boy watch your tone with me, remember my threat, Prince William rolled his eyes, he is not going to aggravate his further further if he is willing to become the next king, anyway, the prince continued, that girl said she was reborn in a new body, so even though she looks like her old self, her body is different. Is it possible that this earth is a magicless place? <laughs> Rose didn't mention if earth is magicless but you have a point. I have a hunch it is so, the king agreed. So then she is weak. Even more weak than before. How can someone so weak save our kingdom? And that, male is a weakling too. That guy may look strong but it's obvious that I can take him out. Prince William thought with a twisted smile. If anything... Analyze is the true savior of our kingdom. The king looked at his son strangely. Son, you do remember that the girl lost her light powers right? But father, have you ever thought that it could be a temporary thing? Prince William pointed out. Dot I actually never thought of that. The king admitted. Analyze was the original person to be prophesied at the savior of our kingdom before. That means that we don't need that girl to be our savior. Sign William. The oracle said Rose is the savior of our kingdom now. I don't know what it makes analyze but the oracle has never been wrong before. Miss Rose must be more than what she seems. She can't even go back to that other place without completing her task here. And you don't know for sure if analyze will get her light powers back. Just wait and see what will happen in the demonstration next week. I don't want to hear any more from you about this until the day comes. The king said firmly. TCH, fine. I'll take my leave father, I still think Canalize is the true savior, Prince William then turned to leave the king's study room but paused in his tracks and faced his father again, by the way, where did you have that girl and that male live father, the prince asked curiously, the king broke out into a sweat, um, don't be mad okay son, the king will have to tell him about Evergarden Mansion, character profiles part 2, name, William Luther Solaris, age, 18, height, 5 feet 11 inches, 180 centimeters, hair color, white, eye color, blue, occupation, crown prince of the Solaris kingdom, personality, two-faced, arrogant, petty, likes, his love analyze, having power, being always right, being praised, dislikes, losing, weak people, being called weak, his brother, Rose, Nick, skills, fire magic, swordsmanship, name, Antonius Nathan Solaris, age, 17, height, 5 feet 10 inches, 178 centimeters, hair color, white, eye color, green, occupation, second prince of the Solaris kingdom, personality, likes, dislikes, skills, ice magic, name, Annalise Barton, age, 16, height, 5 feet 3 inches, 160 centimeters, hair color, reddish brown, eye color, green, occupation, commoner, saintess, fiancé of Prince William, personality, she must be very kind and humble if she got the attention of the crown prince, likes, Prince William, dislikes, skills, light magic, disappeared, baking, imagine she has straight bangs and her hair is more mixed with brown, note, I found these images online. Market Day edited the 11th of June 2023. Rose was a bit sore when she woke up due to the previous night activities. She glanced to her side and saw that Nick is still asleep. Rose chuckled at seeing how cute her boyfriend looks when still asleep. Her bag was left on the floor on Rose's side of the bed, so she reached over and took her phone out. It's almost 9 in the morning. Rose saw the time on the phone and also that her phone is only 10% charged. My phone is dying and there is no way to charge it. I wonder why the maids hadn't woken us up. Rose turned to Nick and gently nudged him. Babe, wake up. It's almost nine and we probably missed breakfast, Rose said gently. Huh? Nick said sleepily. Come on Nick, sleeping in is bad and I want to show you around today, Rose told him excitedly. Nick snapped his eyes opened and sat up on the bed. I'm up. So you are going to show me around babe? Yeah, even though I hate how the people of this world have treated me. 
there is actually things here that gave me good memories. So I just want us to go out so that I can show you places. That sounds awesome babe. Nick couldn't help but feel excited. Suddenly some knocking is heard outside the door. Miss Rose and Master Nielos. I have brought a fresh change of clothing for you. A maid called outside the door. All right. Time to get up, said Rose. Dash. Rose and Nick went down to the dining room looking all freshened up. They were both provided a set of old world European like clothing that borders between medieval and Victorian era. A good thing for Rose is that the corset and bustle cage hasn't been invented so the dresses are comfortably loose but somehow still showed her figure. Greetings Miss Rose and Master Nielos, said the butler Sebastian by the dining table. Greetings, Rose and Nick replied back. The butler led them to their seats. For today's breakfast there are potato omelettes, sausages, buttered toast, apple pancakes, and yogurt with fruit, said Sebastian. Apple pancakes? Never tried that before, said Nick. Sounds good. Can't wait to dig in, said Rose. The couple delightfully at their breakfast. So Rose, what do you plan to show me today? Nick asked while cutting a piece of sausage. While chewing, Rose began to think. There's a lot of places I want to show to you like the public park, the zoo, or even my favorite spot where I go to relax. Dash later, Sebastian called for a coachman to take Rose and Nick out to explore. The coachman was a different person. He is a jolly old fellow who starts making conversation with the couple. The two didn't mind the guy being talkative. They were going to explore the towns and it is a little long of a drive away. The guy helped tease their boredom during the ride. The man talks about a bunch of random things like his family, the kingdom's economy, or something funny that has happened to him. Then he mentions something that caught Rose's interest. You kids are in luck today, said the coachman. Today is market day. Rose suddenly gasped and jolted her body up from leaning on Nick, surprising her boyfriend market day, she exclaimed, I totally forgot about that, oh yes, the coachman continued, a lot of new things are coming to be showcased in the capital, what's market day, Nick asked, Rose turned to face Nick, market day is an event in the capital of the Solaris kingdom where you can meet merchants or sellers from other kingdoms and purchase their goods, it is like an international event because people from other continents of Gaia come over too, there are also fairs and games too, also different food stalls, the zoo is going to be packed, Rose explained excitedly. Oh wow, said Nick in awe. Market day is what it's called in the Solaris kingdom, other kingdoms have it too but it's probably called something else, and it's not only for one day too, it usually lasts three days, Rose continued. That sounds like fun, lots of fun, Rose agreed. Nick, today is going to be so exciting. It's a good thing the king gave us a lot of money to sustain us, she said, taking out her money pouch. Yeah, though it is so much coins, Nick stated, feeling the weight of the pouch. Yeah, unfortunately there are no paper currency in this world. Our cash from Earth would not be recognized, stated Rose factually. Paper currency? So is it true that you were originally from Gaia but was summoned from another world Miss Rose? The coachman asked while looking at the road ahead. Yeah. Rose then coughed and cleared her throat. Mr. Coachman, do you know how far the knowledge of us being summoned from another world has reached? Rose asked carefully. Huh? Well if I have to guess, everyone knows? The coachman said. What? Rose exclaimed in surprise. Is that a bad thing, Mom? Well, I am actually not sure, but I hope it's not bad, said Rose uncertainly. Nick wonders why Rose reacts that way but he has a hunch. He will ask her once they reach their destination. Dash. The coachman finally drops the couple off at the capital. The capital of the Solaris Kingdom is called Solar Square. Yeah, I know it's not original. So when do you want me to come back and pick you both up? Asked the coachman once the teens got off the carriage. Rose and Nick look at each other. I was thinking we can spend more than one day in the capital. We can book a place to rest at an inn or lodge and leave when market day is over. What do you think Nick? Sounds cool. It will be more time for me to observe how this world is like, said Nick. Okay. Rose then turned to the coachman. We decided to go back home once market day is over. When you go back, please tell Sebastian that and to not worry. We are going to book a place to stay for a few days, Rose told the coachman. Are you sure? 
the coachman asked worriedly. Yes, Rose's concern. So, what's up? Why did the idea of everyone knowing about our predicament bothers you? Nick asked once the coachman left. He believes he knows the answer but wants to be sure. Well, I just think that we will likely be harassed by the populace, Rose answered worriedly. Nick raised a brow, harassed her? If you think of it that way, that's a bit much isn't it? I kind of thought of something similar, or the opposite of what you said, what do you think will happen to us? Rose asked, that we will be treated as celebrities, said Nick. Really Nick? Now it's Rose's turn to raise a brow. Well, why not? Ha. Huh? That's unlikely Nick. Maybe for you since you are basically an alien and no one knows you, but me? My old self was hated by everyone here. I am still hated even now. I can never be someone to be idolized, Rose said with a scowl. I can never be like the hero and analyze, Rose thought bitterly. That sounds over the top. There were a lot of rumors about me in the past, very ugly rumors, said Rose blankly. But still, Nick began. That king said that there is a prophesy that says you will save this kingdom. Basically, you are the chosen one. Seriously Nick? A Star Wars reference? Rose deadpanned. The two stared at each other for an uncomfortable moment. Well, would everyone here even recognize you? Nick finally said, of course they will. I used to come to the capital all the time. Now that I think about it, it might not be a good idea to be outside. Rose looks down with a sad expression. No Rose. Nick didn't yell but his voice is firm and demands attention. He puts his hands tightly on Rose's shoulder, grabbing her attention as she immediately looks up towards Nick's eyes. I know that you are still battling with your inner turmoil but you need to be strong Rose. The people of this world don't matter to you anymore. You belong to Earth, not this world anymore. Don't forget the friends and family from Earth that care about you. Don't forget that you have my feelings for you. You have myself to protect you from any harm. So don't let these negative thoughts prevent you from having fun, Nick finished. Rose saw Nick's determination to make her see reason in his grey eyes and finally felt enlightened. You are right Nick, said Rose. I shouldn't let these negative thoughts overtake me. Forget what I said earlier. This is the last time for me to be broody. I don't want to be like a certain emo ninja or sparkly vampire. Emo ninja? Nick asked with a confused look. I'll explain to you later. Rose then just took one of Nick's hands off her shoulder and held it tightly. Let's go have some fun. Note, I thought of making the upcoming chapters like fillers but changed my mind. I plan to write long chapters of them spending time together, among other things. Also, if I edited a chapter. I will label it next to the chapter title. More info about Rose and Nick. Rose and Nick met each other as toddlers when she almost ran him over with her tricycle at a park. She didn't look where she was going. They both went to the same schools in their town from pre-K to 12th grade. Their moms are friends with each other. Rose and Nick started out as friends that grew into more over time. Rose likes anime a lot and constantly watches it. Nick is mostly a non-anime watcher but became interested after being introduced to it by Rose. She introduced him to Attack on Titan first and he enjoyed it. Rose likes watching Demon Slayer and her favorite character is Zenitsu. Rose tends to be emotional because she has been through a lot in her last life. Almost everyone from her old world was against her. Nick most of the time dresses in black so people mistakenly thought he is emo. Never judge a book by its cover. Nick is half Asian. His father is of French descent while his mom is half Korean and half Japanese. Rose is full Caucasian. She is of multiple European ethnicities. Nick knows mainly Japanese and Korean martial arts. Nick's maternal family owns a dojo and his mom teaches him how to fight. Rose and Nick lost their virginity to each other. Rose accidentally discovered the My Fair Maiden novel. It was found abandoned on a park bench. It is unknown who left it there. The first day edited the 11th of June 2023, Rose and Nick started to explore the capital. They walk through the festivities while holding each other's hands like any other couple. Rose, who originally came from Gaia, saw the sightings as no different from what she had seen before. Maybe some new foods and products. She used to always go out for market day every year. Still, it is fun to go out once in a while. How do you like the sights Nick? Rose asked her boyfriend. She smiled when she saw his expression. Nick had an expression of absolute curiosity. He kept turning his head to look around while walking beside his girlfriend. The capital's walkways are crowded with people. It is a mix of commoners and nobles alike. 
There are many stalls around selling food and items from different areas of the world. You see, the world of Gaia is kind of similar to Earth. For example, there is actually a man wearing a sort of East Asian-like dress selling candied fruits and another man wearing what looks like a hijab selling beautiful calligraphy and other art. There are also stalls for games like catching small fishes from a pool through breakable nets or throwing darts at balloons. Even other forms of entertainment such as shows with hand puppets or comedy sketches. Nick saw something that surprised him. Is that guy over there doing magic? He asked Rose, pointing towards somewhere at a distance. Where? Rose squinted her eyes at the direction Nick pointed at. Over there. Dash. Step right up folks and witness the power of electricity. A man in a fancy outfit called out to the public. You see this bulbous object here, he said, holding out what looks like a light bulb towards the market goers. The people nodded at him. I'm going to store electricity into it to make it light up. The man then waved two fingers and shot electricity towards the light bulb. The bulb then lights up, surprising the people. Ooh! The people exclaimed in awe. Now you have witnessed the power of electricity, and the newest invention of the Solaris Kingdom. Dash. Who is he? Thomas Edison? Nick asked in interest. Dash. By your truly, to E. Dickens, the man introduced himself to his patrons. Dash. Oh. That kind of confirms it, Nick stated, hearing the name. Suddenly Rose got an idea. Hey Nick, let's go meet the guy. Nick didn't have time to protest as she grabbed Nick's arm and they both headed towards the man, to E. Dickens. Dash. Now, I have other inventions I would like to show you all. How about Tilly was suddenly cut off? Hey you. Rose yelled out towards him. Is that Miss Rosalind the Duke Meyer's daughter? A random patron asked. Rose would have retorted back but she has an objective in mind. Once she and Nick came close enough to Toma, the patrons immediately backed away from them and started to walk away. Hey wait, Toma called out to his patrons but was ignored. You are Thomas Edison right? Rose asked, gaining his attention, annoyed with the botching of his name and the fact that the girl drove away his patrons. Toma decided to be rude to the girl. It's Toma Edekin's girl. Now what do you both want? The man seems to not recognize Rose, which is a good thing. Rose, what are you doing? Nick asked in confusion while looking at Rose as she rummages through her bag. Rose took out her dead phone and held it out to Tim. Please charge my phone with your electric powers, Rose asked with a determined expression. Dash. So you are telling me this stuff is not actually made of cotton even though it is called cotton candy? Prince William asked the vendor. Yes your highness. The vendor replied back respectfully. Prince William decided to have a taste of the blue cotton-like confectionery. <laughs> Not bad. It tastes sweet like sugar. Hey Tristan, how does it taste? Prince William turned to face his friend Tristan Meyer but saw the guy frozen stiff looking at something at a distance. The guy also had dropped his cotton candy to the ground. Tristan, what is wrong with you? Why are you standing like that? Prince William grabbed Tristan's shoulder and turned him around to look into his eyes. I just saw my sister, said Tristan, face in a shock expression. Dash back with the couple. You, want me to insert electricity, into that shiny black box? To E. Dickens asked in astonishment, pointing at Rose's phone. Yes, said Rose, to across him arms and shows an expressionless face. What's in it for me? Are you going to pay me? Well, how much do you want to be paid? Rose asked. I hope he won't ask for too much, Rose thought. Five thousand watts, Rose. Rose, are you sure about this? There is no Wi-Fi in this world so we might not be able to use our phones. Also, did we bring enough money with us? How much is 5,000 watts? Nick asked. You don't know your currency? Just where are you from? Tim asked Nick in confusion. So it seems they found one person who didn't know about them. Rose pinched between her brows and sighed. The price the guy asked for is too much just to shoot a bit of electricity into her phone. 5,000 watts is $500 Nick, said Rose, making Nick's size pop out. What? he exclaimed. Did we even bring that much money with us? Rose took out the coin pouch. I don't know, we would have to count. One coin is 10 watts each so we would have to take out 500 coins. Dash. What? You have seen Rosalind, Prince William yelled out and shaking Tristan like a lunatic, scaring the passerbys with his outburst. Yes your highness, I have seen my sister, Tristan confirmed, feeling dizzy from the constant shaking.
Prince William stopped his actions on making his friend mentally impaired and sighed again. I told you to just call me William since you are my friend, reminded the prince rubbing his forehead. Anyway, where did you see her? Tristan pointed towards a certain direction. Over there, he said. Prince William looks towards where Tristan points at. He had a WTF look. What in the worlds is she and that male doing? Dash no way in hell are we going to pay 5,000 volts just for you to shoot a measly bit of electricity. Rose argued with Tim. You scared off my patrons. Tim argued back. How about this? If you zap a bit of your electric power into my box, I'll show you something amazing. Rose offered. Nick, who is standing on the side silently, looks at Rose like she has gone crazy. Rose. Nick started to say. I know what I'm doing Nick. Rose cut him off. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing. I am just making a gamble, she thought nervously. Tim Edikens looked suspiciously at the box held in her hand. That box, I have never seen one like it. It looks interesting. Maybe this girl will show me why it's so important to her that she wants me to shoot my ability into it. All right little girl, I have decided to do what you asked, declared Tim. Little girl, thought Rose, feeling miffed. Now where should I offer my power? Tim asked. Right through here, said Rose, pointing at the opening slip on her phone for her charger. Dash. It seems Rose is just talking to the kingdom's top inventor Turner. Tristan stated seeing their interaction at a distance. Prince William, who is watching them too, had a suspicious expression. Let's follow them, he said. Why your highness I mean W. William. What did you say? Tristan stuttered, facing the prince. He wanted to make sure he was not hearing it wrong. We follow them. The chi demon must be up to something and we need to stop her, Prince William declared as if he is a knight of justice. Dash. Tim Edikens finally charges Rose's phone, he just points his finger towards the charging slot of the phone and shoots a bit of his electric power through it. After a couple seconds, he is done. Well, I did what you asked, said Tim. Rose pressed the on button of her phone with Nick peeking over her shoulder. She pressed the on button and her jaw dropped. The screen of her phone showed multiple text notifications and missed calls. The date on her phone says April 29th. 20xx, which means a few days have passed since both her and Nick have been summoned. The phone edited the 11th of June 2023. W what how can this be? Rose couldn't believe what she is seeing. Her phone is still getting notifications and the date is on the current time from when they disappeared. Time is still flowing normally. Nick, do you see this? Rose showed her phone closer to Nick's view. Nick had a look of disbelief. Rose, check out the text messages, said Nick. Rose began to type her passcode and then pressed on the message app. She got multiple texts from her family and friends from Earth from the message app. Rose where are you? Tilda Terrence, her older brother, sweetie please answer your calls. You have been gone a few days. Where are you? Are you okay? Please be safe. Tilda mum, honey, where are you? Please be safe wherever you are. We have called the police to look for you. Tilda dad, Rose, are you okay? Where are you? Tilda Caitlin. Her best friend, is this real? Nick asked himself, in shock from seeing the text messages from Rose's phone. He took out his own phone from his back pocket. Hey dude, can you please do the same for me? Nick asked Tim, but the guy didn't respond back or follow Nick's request. He just furrowed his brows while staring at their phones. What is going on? Why are these boxes you have so special? Tim asked. Rose looks up from her phone to respond. I promise to show you something amazing right? How about an instant portrait? An instant portrait? What do you mean? Tim exclaimed in confusion. Rose just trapped her arms round Tim's shoulders, surprising him. W what in God's name are why you doing? Tim stuttered, uncomfortable with Rose touching him without permission. Say cheese. Rose held her phone up for the right lighting to take a perfect selfie of her and Tim. Suddenly light flashed before his eyes, making him see colors. Dash. Did she just touched another man? Just how shameless can she be? Prince William said in anger. I wonder what is that black box she is holding, and why is she holding it up like that, said Tristan. He wants to find out about the current Rose. She will answer to him since he is her brother. Both guys are still rooted on the same spot. Prince William had dropped his unfinished cotton candy onto the ground like Tristan. The NPC cotton candy vendor mourned the loss. Her lover should be ashamed to have someone like her in his life. I would never let my analyze be near any other man.
Prince William stated, but William, too is middle-aged, with a wife and kids. Tristan reminded him but Prince William didn't hear him. Dash. After the flash of light that clouded his vision, Tua shook his head and blinked rapidly. What was that? I just took a picture of us, look. Rose shoved her phone towards Tua's face, Tua's pupils dilated, the gad. How is there already a painting of us in that box? Tua yelled out, Tua Edekins could not vanish his shocked Pikachu face. He held up his trembling arm and pointed at Rose's smartphone. HHH how is, is this possible? Is that box you have in your hands the ultimate magic tool? A device of the gods, the inventor exclaimed. Well it's not a magic tool nor it's created from any god, stated Rose. It is called a smartphone and it is created by human hands. Where did you get it girl? If there is more, I must seek it, to Edith and said while his eyes are still glued to the instant picture on the screen. Do the same for my boyfriend's phone then we'll talk, said Rose. Tua Edikens turned to face Nick. Nick had his phone held out. Tua just shoots from his finger a bolt of electricity into the charger hole like he did for Rose's phone. Nick turn his phone on and the date pops up on the screen, the same date on Rose's phone. April 29, 20xx, he opened his message app and saw a bunch of texts. Nick, where are you bro? Tim, his younger brother. Son, I hope you are safe. Please come home. Your mother is deeply worried. Dad, sweetie, where are you? I am so worried about you. I hope you are safe somewhere. I love you son. Why aren't you answering us? Mum, Nick felt guilt for making his family worried but the situation is out of his hands. He then decided to text them back. He doesn't know if his texts will go through, but it wouldn't hurt to try. He formed a group chat with his family members. Hello everyone. Please don't worry about me. I am fine. I am with Rose right now. You wouldn't believe what happened to us. Nick. Nick sent the message. A few seconds later there was an immediate response. Nick, you finally talked to US. Tim, the deal. While Nick just made his discovery, Rose is still having a conversation with Tim. Now girl, where do I seek more of this smartphone that you have? Is there someone that is an even greater inventor than myself? If so, I must find that person to pay my respects and ask them to teach me how to make that tool, said Tim. Actually, there is no way for you to get a smartphone, Rose admitted. What? Tim suddenly shouted angrily, losing some of his rationale. He grabbed Rose's arm that held her phone, tightening his hold on her painfully. Ow, shouted Rose. Hearing his girlfriend's cry of pain breaks Nick's trance with staring at his phone. He immediately went towards Tua and pushed the guy roughly away from Rose. What the fuck are you doing hurting my girlfriend? Nick said angrily and wrapped his arm around Rose. Tua had stumbled back from the push but immediately righted himself. He straightened his suit and faces the couple. How dare you lie to me? You said there is more of that magic box. I never said that. Rose corrected him. I just said we'll talk because I wanted to make a deal with you. A deal? Why would I make a deal with you when you said I couldn't get the same box thing like you? You may not be able to get a phone, but what if I said that I can give you knowledge, said Rose. From what source? Tua said skeptically with a scrunched face. Rose held out her phone towards him. From this so-called magic box that I have in my hand, it contains all the knowledge you can think of. Are you serious? Tua said in disbelief. And what do you want me to do for you? I want you to create a power source for my phone said Rose. Why do you think I am the person who can create a power source for the device? To asked. I think with your electric ability and that keen mind of yours as an inventor, you are the right person for the job. A job, huh? Are you going to pay me if I accepted this job? To said a bit arrogantly. Yes, I'll pay you. Rose confirmed. I need to step aside and think, said to go ahead. To then walked away from the couple. Oh my God. Rose breathed out, that was nerve-wracking speaking to him. My phone was able to take pictures but I don't know if I can access anything else. I was able to text my family and they texted me back. Nick piped up from behind her, still in shock about that. Rose immediately twist around to face him. Are you serious babe? She exclaimed in surprise. Yeah, I didn't think it would work. Then internet access should bound to work. We should at least check to make sure. Quick. Go on your browser. I hope I wasn't speaking only bullshit to that guy. Dash Prince William and Tristan had found a bush to hide behind so that they can be in close rear shot to Rose. They couldn't hear the entire conversation but heard snippets of it. What the hell are they talking about a magic box? 
Prince William asked Tristan. I don't know your highness but maybe it's that black box my sister is holding, Tristan answered, and it got Lord Timmer on edge, Prince William noted. I got to find out about that box no matter what. Note, a couple days late from when I was supposed to post this chapter but I had to take my aunt to the hospital and lost track. Deities very short chapter. In the beginning of the universe, multiple deities were born. They spread out to oversee different worlds. These worlds are interconnected to one another. The deities have to follow many important rules. One of the most important rules are this. Do not allow foreign objects in other worlds in which it did not originate. But after living through the flow of life for who knows how long since the deities are immortal beings, some deities grew careless. Like dropping a book on a bench. Agreement. To Edicons came back to them. Okay. After much thought I have decided, I will work for you to create a power source for that box, he said, pointing at the object of the conversation. Thank you for your answer Sir Timmer. Then we have an agreement Rose started to say but was cut off by Timmer. You promise to pay me and give me knowledge right? Of course, I will make sure you won't regret it. All right, let's set up a contract. How about I visit your estate after market day is over, suggested Timmer. That's fine, I'll give you the address. Rose took out her pen and notepad from her handbag. Wait, what is that? To asked, pointing at the pen. Oh, this is a pen. It is used for writing, answered Rose. To walk closer towards Rose, which made Nick on edge and blocked her from coming any closer. To stopped walking and stood a good distance away from the two but could still see the sight of the pen. That doesn't look like a quill. Tell me, does it write better? He asked Rose. I'm not sure. But the pen stores ink inside it, Rose explained. Fascinating, said Tilla with a thumb and forefinger under his chin. Rose wrote down her address and ripped the paper out of her notepad and handed it to Tilla. Tilla took it from her. This piece of paper looks ever finer quality than what I'm used to. You know, I have been hearing rumors and I hope you can confirm it. Rose and Nick waited for him to continue. There are rumors that there are two people summoned from another world. Is it both of you? Yes. Rose immediately answered, she won't lie to him. I don't know the full story but apparently you are Duke Meyer's daughter that was executed a month ago. Yes so will knowing that change your mind about our agreement? Rose asked urgently, if Tara changes his mind then they can't contact their friends and family on their phone. No, I honestly don't care who you are. I only care about obtaining more knowledge, Tara replied. So? We agree to see each other again after market day? Rose asked for confirmation. Agreed. All right. We will be on our way. We will see you soon. All right then. Tara nodded his head in goodbye. Rose and Nick left Tara and continued to explore more of the capital. I am just wondering, how is it possible for our phone to still work here? Nick asked Rose while walking together. I don't know Nick. This shouldn't be possible at all, replied Rose. Could something out of her understanding cause this? Note, I have edited the previous chapters again. Now the story looks more polished. The story hadn't changed but I suggest reading it again because I added more words and sentences in some chapters. Also, I am planning for this story to have lore like involving deities and other stuff. End of day 1 edited the 11th of June 2023. Damn it to hell. Prince William angrily kicked a nearby rock after Rose left after her interaction with Tim. What the hell is her plan? Let's continue following them. I got to see what else she is up to, he told Tristan. They stood up from kneeling behind a bush and began to follow the two other worlders' path at a distance. Uck, it still irks me that she gets to live in the Evergarden Mansion. That place is supposed to be mine and Analyze's home. First she got my father at the palm of her hands and now the kingdom's famous inventor Tim. Prince Tristan ranted. Um your high I mean William, shouldn't we just question Tim who is right by his booth? We can force him to tell us what he spoke to Rose about. Tristan suggested to his longtime friend and future ruler. That is a good idea but we got to keep following those two. We will question to her on a later note. Right now, we got to see who else Rose will interact with and make sure she is not planning something malicious, replied the prince. As they continue their path, Tristan had something on his mind. Um William can I ask you something? This might make you angry but this has been on my mind. Tristan asked feebly, afraid to instigate the prince's wrath. Prince William glances over his shoulder at his longtime friend while walking ahead. Sure, just shoot your question Tristan. I promise not to get angry. 
Do you have feelings for my sister? The question made the prince paused abruptly from his walk. He suddenly stood frozen stiff. Tristan also stopped walking and braced himself for the prince's ire. He suddenly regrets asking that question. Without turning his back to face his friend, the prince only replied with one word. No, Prince William said so tonelessly that anyone cannot tell his true feelings. I'll ask you why you ask me that question later. Right now we have to continue following those two before we completely lose sight of them. Tristan gulped but continues his trek with with the prince without another word. If you have no feelings for my sister, why do you have such intense reactions with any topic relating to her? Tristan thought. Dash. Rose and Nick just continue exploring the market without any more suspicious interactions. So far, the couple was sighted trying different food stalls and playing games. The foods they have tried so far look similar to earth food, like the kebabs and pita sandwiches from a Middle Eastern or Mediterranean-inspired stall. From an Oriental-inspired stall, they tried various candied fruit. They didn't want one to eat too many foods even though they want to try everything. So the last thing they got is ice cream. This definitely makes up for the ice cream we lost, said Nick, eating his chocolate-flavored ice cream while sitting on a bench beside his girlfriend. Yes, definitely, agreed Rose, wearing her strawberry-flavored ice cream. The games they played so far when exploring the market is throwing darts and catching small fishes with breakable nets in scoops. This is similar to a Japanese game where you try to scoop up gold fishes, Rose stated while trying to carefully catch the fishes. Really? What is it called? Nick asks, while doing the same activity as Rose. Don't remember but I have seen it in multiple animes, Rose answered. When she thought she successfully scoop up some fish, the net suddenly breaks. Darn it, this is maddeningly difficult. How are you doing with it Nick? Rose saw that Nick successfully scooped up the fishes and became surprised. How did you do that? It's all about patience, replied Nick. As a martial artist, Nick has good control of his body so he was able to be stable with scooping the fishes. Rose looked down at her broken scoop then looks back at Nick. You got to teach me some moves Nick, she said. Nick turned to look at her with raised eyebrow. Moves? Your martial arts? You want to learn some fighting moves? Are you sure you want to? Just so you know, it is not easy, he said. Rose bit her lip while thinking more about her decision. Well, since we are here having to survive in this world, I think it's a good idea to learn some fighting skills, she replied. Seeing her determined look, Nick knows that Rose is willing to follow through with her decision no matter what. Besides, he couldn't say no to his girlfriend. Okay, dash. They seem to not be interacting with any more people today stated Tristan as he and the prince kept themselves hidden from the couple's view. Right now they found a tree to hide behind and observe the couple at a distance. Prince William did not answer and continues to stare intensely at Nick and Rose. The day is almost ending William. I doubt they will do anything else that will pique our suspicions, continues Tristan. There are two more days until market day ends. We got to keep observing them until then. Prince William finally said. Tristan just look at the prince for a moment with a disbelieving expression. Okay, he said with a sigh. It's not like he can disobey orders from a prince. With that decided, soon enough day one of market day ends. Informational chapter, magic. Magic that exists in the world of Gaia. Elemental common, fire, water, earth, air, others, healing, gravity, nature, electricity, rare, dark, light, extremely rare space, time, extremely extremely rare, creation. In Gaia every person is born with at least one type of magic. Magic is not genetically inherited, but randomly selected. It is very rare to be born with more than one magic ability. In Gaia's history, only one person had three different abilities. How strong or weak you are in utilizing magic depends on skill. The old Rose had weak water magic because she never had proper training. The People from Earth edited the 11th of June 2023. To my previous readers, this chapter is a combination of three parts into one. The first day of market day ended and night came. The couple had found an inn to stay for two nights. Once the third day of market day came by, they will return back to Evergarden Mansion. Right now they are sharing a room. At this time, they should be sleeping right now. Rose had her head leaning on Nick's shoulder while Nick sat on the bed with his back to the dashboard. They are both busy texting on their phones. We can't keep staying on our phone or else we'll drain the battery, 
How's it going with your family Nick? Rose asked her boyfriend with her eyes remaining glued to her phone, tapping on it nonstop. Nick scrunched his eyebrows in frustration. I am trying to explain the situation to them but they are having a hard time believing me, he replies. Dash. Back on earth, earlier today, in one house in a suburban neighborhood, a young man that looks a bit like Nick can be seen in his room playing a video game. He is playing Counter-Strike with his online friends. His name is Timothy Tim Loron, 15-year-old younger brother of Nielos Loron. He constantly kept thinking of his missing older brother. He keeps getting worried about his brother's safety and hope that Nick is not in some deep trouble. He thought of Rose too and thought how could the both of them who just went out on a date be missing. He wish nothing terrible has happened to them and wish for them to return home unharmed. So right now. He is just playing one of his favorite video games to help calm his mind from the constant worry. He kept finding and shooting opponents in the game until one of his online friends accidentally shot his character in the game dead. What the fuck man? Dude, stop with the constant friendly fire or I will kick you out of my team. Timothy aka Tim ranted towards the screen. If you got no skill, just get the fuck out. Suddenly he heard a notification sound from his phone. Huh? Someone texted me. Tim grabbed his phone laying beside him on the couch and turned his phone on. Seeing the notification bar, his eyes immediately bulged out. He immediately went to the message app to read the text from the family group chat. Hello everyone. Please don't worry about me. I am fine. I am with Rose right now. You wouldn't believe what happened to us. Nick. Tim gasped in shock that his brother finally texted them. Without pausing the game, he suddenly stood up from the couch and ran towards a random direction in the house. Mum, Dad, Nick finally texted us, come down here quick. Tim yelled to the top of his lungs. What? Nick texted back, a man and a woman's voice called out somewhere in the house simultaneously. Yes. Tim continues to cry out, just come down here quick. A few seconds later. A older female version of Nick and an older man that Tim got most of his looks from came downstairs to meet their youngest son. Is it true? The woman said anxiously with deep worry in her eyes looking at Tim. Also tears staining her face from crying, Nick texted back. The man also looks like he's been crying but right now seems more calmer than the woman. Yes mom and dad. Nick texted back and he said he is okay. Tim replies emotionally. Dash at a public park on earth. Two people can see seen sitting close to each other on a bench. One man and one woman. The woman is crying over the shoulder of the man, while the man tried his best to comfort her. He continues to rub his hands on her back. Oh Terry, how could this have happened to us? My best friend and Nick are still missing. It has been a few days, but any longer would confirm something worse has happened. The young woman continues to sob, with tears staining the man's shirt sleeve. The man also feel distressed like the woman but has to stay calm for her sake. He kept rubbing her back to try to soothe her. I believe Rose and her boyfriend are all right somewhere. If I know my sister, she would fight to get back to us no matter what gate, said the man with conviction. The two people having this conversation on the bench is Caitlin Kate Howard and Terence Terry Dale. Kate is Rose's 17-year-old best friend. Terry is Rose's 19-years-old older brother. My parents are worried for them too. Hell. Everyone in the entire neighborhood is worried, Caitlin said. Nothing usually happens in our small quiet town. Why does it have to be them? The police had been searching every area, especially the places those two tend to hang out for dates. But still no luck. It's like they just disappeared. Terry added, he doesn't realize how right he is. Suddenly a notification sound of a phone can be heard, breaking their moment. Huh? Who just texted me? Kate unzipped her purse and took out her phone. She turned it on and her eyes immediately widens as seeing the name on the notification bar. Rose. Our Rose just texted me. Kate stuttered out. Terry's eyes widened in shock on hearing this. She did? And she texted you first? He exclaims. Yes Terry. She did. Kate went to her message app to read the text. Kate, I am sorry to worry you and everyone else, but Nick and I are fine. Something has happened to us. Something that is hard for anyone to believe. Rose. Kate showed Terry the text. They both showed happiness that they finally received a reply from Rose and was confirmed that she and Nick are okay. Terry however, scrunched his eyebrows at what he read. Something hard to believe. What does she mean? Kate began to text Rose back. Her fingers tapping on the screen speedily, Rose, I am with your brother Terry right now, we are glad that you both are alright, 
What do you mean something has happened to the both of you and it's hard to believe, you guys have been missing for a few days and everyone thought you both are in trouble. Were you both kidnapped or something else? Gate, kind of, but it's hard to explain. Something unbelievable has really happened to us. Rose, after reading the text, Kate and Terry look at each other in confusion. What happened Rose, Kate? They waited with bated breaths for Rose's reply. Nick and I, were transported to another world. Rose, huh? Kate and Terry exclaim simultaneously after reading the text. She can't be joking right now. Kate, call her so that we can hear from her said Terry, in disbelief of what he just read from the text. I'll let her know first, said Kate. Rose, I am going to call you. Kate, no wait. Don't call me. It might drain my phone battery faster. Rose. She doesn't want me to call her because she thinks calling will drain the battery, Kate told Terry. Terry rolled his eyes at this. He thinks texting drains the phone battery more than calling. She has her charger though, but fine whatever, just let me text her this time Kate. Kate lent Terry her phone and he started to text his sister, Rose. This is your bro. This is not the time for jokes. Just tell us where you guys are. Are you guys held hostage somewhere? Or are you guys not really missing and playing a selfish game with us? Terry. Terry, I am not joking or lying to you. I am dead serious. How dare you think we are trying to deceive you guys? You know I am not that kind of person. Even if everyone tries to look for us, you can never find us no matter how hard you try. Rose. She said she is serious. Terry mutters, which Kate heard. This is totally unbelievable, stated Kate. Shaking her head, Terry continues to text back. You know Rose, I told Kate that the police had been looking everywhere for you and Nick with no luck, and I said it's like you both disappeared. I wasn't even serious about the last bit. Terry, Rose replies, Nick and I really both disappeared. After we went to get ice cream on our date, a magic circle appeared under our feet and sucked us in. We are in a world called Gaia right now. You guys need to fucking believe me. I'm being fucking serious. Rose. Terry looks back at Kate. She started swearing, he stated. Kate looks straight to his eyes. She is serious. Isn't she? A ping sound is heard, indicating another text is heard. You better apologize to me Terry for thinking I am deceiving you or else I'll kick your ass once I'm able to return home. Rose. Terry, I'll talk to you geese more later. I need to save my phone power for the next few days. Tell mum, dad, and our friends that I'm fine. I love you all. I'll catch up with you guys soon. Tile. Rose. All right, Tile for now. We love you Rose. Kate. The conversation was ended. Kate and Terry again look at each other. What now? Asked Kate. I guess, we tell everyone else what happened to Rose and Nick. Said Terry Unchley. Dash the Lauren family sat together on the living room couch. Nick's parents and younger brother Tim have their eyes glued on Tim's phone. Tim started to text Nick back. Nick, if it's really you... Are you and Rose okay? Are you guys hurt? What happened to you guys? Me and our parents are worried. Tim, I am sorry that you guys are worried about us by we are both fine. No harm came to us. You likely won't believe this but something very strange has happened to us. Nick, Tim and his parents gave a sigh of relief, seeing that Nick texted that both him and Rose are okay. I am so glad that they are fine, said Nick's mum. Yes my dear, it seems that Nick and Rose are safe, agreed Nick's dad. But what does he mean that something strange has happened to them? Tim, asked Nick to elaborate. Mrs. Laurent told the youngest son. Okay mum. Tim continues to text on his phone. Please elaborate Nick. What has happened to you and Rose? You guys have been missing for almost a week and the police couldn't find and traces of you both. Tim, what happened is that Rose and I were transported to another world through a portal of sort. Sounds ridiculous right? Come Nick. What? That sounds totally ridiculous. Tim, hand me the phone so that I can call him. It would be better to hear his voice. Mrs. Lauren had her hand reached out for Tim to pass her his phone. Tim wordlessly handed her his phone. Mrs. Lauren began to dial Nick's number and put the phone to her ear. She heard the sound of the phone trying to connect to the number but, she was immediately hanged up. Huh? The connection broke. Nick hung up on me. She gave Tim's phone back. Tim. I know that you were trying to call me but I currently cannot take any calls right now. Nick, that was mom trying to call you with my phone. Tim, so mom and dad are with you? Nick, yeah. Tim, okay well I'm sorry but I cannot take any calls right now. I am trying to save as much battery life as I can. 
The world I'm currently in does not have an outlet for me to charge my phone. Nick, he is saying again that he is in a different world, pointed out Mr. Laurent. Tim scrunched his eyebrows in confusion with his eyes completely focused on the screen of his phone. He quickly texted back, Bro, you're joking right? Saying you and Rose are in another world is like you are not taking the situation of you guys' disappearances seriously. Tim. Nick didn't text back for a moment. Nick. Why aren't you texting? Mrs. Laurent said anxiously. Finally, Nick texted again. I am dead serious. Nick. The Laurents became so quiet that you can hear a pin drop. How about you let us text him this time Tim? Mr. Laurent asked. Where are your phones though? I am texting Nick through the family group chat. Tim asked his father. I left mine upstairs because I was hurrying downstairs to meet you when you yelled that Nick texted you, replied Mr. Loron. Me too, added Mrs. Loron. With a shrug, Tim handed Mr. Loron his phone. Nick, this is Dad. We are very worried about you son. I hope you understand this is no time for jokes so answer me this question. Are you being honest? Dad. Dad, I would never lie to you guys about anything. I... A.M. Being honest. Honest to God. Nick. Seeing the last bit of the text, Mr. Laurent finally felt that his oldest son is being truthful. I think, Nick is telling the truth, murmured Mr. Laurent. Let me text him this time dear, said Mrs. Laurent. Mr. Laurent passes the phone to his wife. Nick, this is mum. I saw what you texted your dad. You know that saying that both you and Rose were transported to another world sounds like something out of a fairy tale. You promised to never lie to us about anything right? You cannot take your disappearance lightly. Mum, I promise you mum, I am not lying. Rose and I are in a fantasy world called Gaia. It happened when some magic portal appeared under our feet and sucked us in after our date. Nick. Holy moly, Nick and Rose got eyes kide, breathed out Tim with wide eyes. What are you on about son? Mr. Laurent asked Tim with a raised eyebrow but Tim didn't answer him. So I don't know how long we are stuck in this world but I will try our best to remain in contact with you guys. Rose is doing the same with her family. Nick. So Nick and Rose is seriously stuck in another world called Gaia. I am not 100% on this but I think we should believe him, said Mr. Laurent. Mrs. Laurent gave a sigh. I feel the same way. How about you Tim? But Tim looks to be distracted as he kept rubbing his face over and over. Oh my fkin god, Izkai is real, Nick and Rose fkin Izkai. Why can't it be me? Tim mutters to himself. What is he on about? Asks Mrs. Laurent to her husband. Mr. Laurent just shrugged. Don't get him wrong, Tim feels distressed about Nick and his girlfriend's situation. It's just that the reality he has always known is shattered and the knowledge that one of his greatest dreams is possible to happen. Mr. Laurent took a turn to text Nick. Nick, we believe you. Make sure you and Rose stay safe but do you know how you guys can return back to Earth? Dad, I don't know, but we are trying to find a way. Nick, how is Rose? Is she doing well? Dad, she is doing fine. But hey Dad I can't text you guys too long. I need to rest up and save my phone battery. Nick, when can we talk to you again? Dad, likely in a few days. Nick, so I guess we should end the conversation until the next few days, said Tim. Let's just give Nick our affection, said Mrs. Laurent. All right Nick, we will talk to you soon. I love you son. You and Rose stay safe. Dad, I love you Nick. You and Rose stay safe and healthy. Mum, I love you bro. I can't believe you got eyes kind man. It kind of makes me jealous. Please take pics if you can and also you and Rose better come back to Earth ASAP. Tim. Market Day 2. Unexpected Encounter. The second day of Market Day has arrived. Rose and Nick woke up feeling refreshed after discovering that they are able to talk to their loved ones on their phone. I can't help but keep wondering how is it possible that we can still connect with our friends and families like this Nick, Rose told her boyfriend as they again explore Market Day. They held hands as they walk side by side. Yes, it is quite a phenomenon isn't it? Agreed Nick. It is strange. I just can't wrap my head around the idea that somehow two different worlds can be connected, continued Rose. Let's not continue dwelling on this for now and just enjoy our time together. Maybe we will eventually find out more about it, said Nick. Yeah, you're right. Let's just enjoy the moment. It is the second day of market day after all. Dash. Hey kids, what kind of show would you like to see today? Asked a young man behind a booth. I want to see the fox and the hare. One kid shouted out. No, 
I want to see the princess's knight, yelled out another kid. I want to see Mr. Punch and his wife. Now, now kids, no fighting and let's have a vote on what show to do today. Dash. Our couple heard the yelling nearby and wondered what is going on over there. Is there a commotion nearby? Nick turned to see where all the noise came from. Rose followed his direction and also look around. She spotted the booth surrounded by a group of children. Nick, look over there. She pointed towards the booth. That booth over there. It seems there is going to be a puppet show. The source of the loud noise came from the puppet show booth surrounded by children. Do you want to check it out? Rose asked Nick. Nick gave a shrug. Why not? Dash. Okay. So we got most votes on Mr. Punch and his wife. Give me a second for me to find our beloved duo. The unknown young man hid behind his curtain in his booth to rummage through his collection of puppets. When he found his desired puppets, he had them pop out of the curtain. One hand controlling Mr. Punch and other controlling his wife Judy. Hello children. Did you miss me? The young man changed his voice to sound more nasally. Yes. Cried out the children. Oh my darlings. How about me Mrs. Punch? The man changed his tone to a more feminine sounding voice for the female puppet. Yes, okay now, let's begin the show of Mr. Punch and his wife. The puppeteer said with his normal voice, dash. As Nick and Rose walk closer to the booth, they can see that there is a puppet show going on to the children. Rose gave a surprised gasp when she heard the puppeteer's voice. No way. Nick looked down at her in concern. What is wrong Rose? He asked. She pointed towards the puppeteer. The puppeteer. He sounds familiar, it couldn't be, you recognized his voice. I think so, sounds like someone I used to know. Dash. The puppeteer are currently having his puppets sing a song that sounds like unintelligible gibberish, which seems to be deliberate, gibberish singing a whoop de doo a whoop de doo Airplane noises the puppeteer made Mr. Punch and his wife sing funnily, which made the kids laugh. Suddenly a dog puppet interrupted their singing time which made the Judy puppet disappear. Oh no, a rabid dog scared Judy away. What shall Mr. Punch do? Said the puppeteer in his narrator voice. Punch the dog that scared Judy. Slap the evil dog. The children yelled out the answer. How dare you scare away my wife while we have our singing time? Mr. Punch said and the puppet slammed its body on the rabid dog puppet. Now both fight each other. Go away. Bad dog. Bad dog. The puppeteer continues his scene with the fight between man and dog. After Mr. Punch was able to defeat the rabid dog puppet, the puppeteer opens the curtain to reveal himself again to the children. Are you having a wonderful time? He asked the children. Yes, Mr. Punch has defeated the evil dog that scares his wife. Now it is time for the puppeteer, who turns out to be Prince Antonius, notices Rose and Nick watching at a distance. Crap, why are they here? said Prince Antonius to himself. Dash oh my god, that is Prince Antonius, whispered Rose. Who? Nick said. Prince Antonius, the second prince. Remember back at that dining room in the royal palace? He sat next to his brother, reminded Rose. Oh, it's that quiet kid. The non-dramatic prince, Nick remembered. They both watched the second prince entertain the children with a puppet show. I have never expected to see the second prince here hosting his own puppet show stated Rose. Note, I edited some of my previous chapters. The short chapters are combined to be one long chapter. Some chapter titles are renamed, Meeting Prince Antonius. Upon noticing our beloved couple, Prince Antonius immediately changed his mind on what he planned to do for his next scene on his very own puppet show. Actually kids, it is time for you to go. My puppet show is over. He told the children hurriedly. What? But we've only been here for a few minutes. One kid complained. Yeah. Agreed another kid. You just started. How about I give you free candies? Prince Antonius said calmly over the edge of his booth. Free candies. The group of kids yelled out excitedly. Prince Antonius unexpectedly pulled out a bag of candies from behind him and hold it out to show to the group of children. Those kids eyed the bag of candies hungrily. Some even drooled. The second prince stepped down from his booth. Still holding out the bag of candies, his full figure stood in front of the children. You want these candies kids? He asked the wide-eyed children gently. The children wordlessly nodded at him, eyes on the prize. Well, go get it. The second prince threw the bag of candies as hard as he can to a great distance. 
The children immediately chased after it while fighting tooth and nail with each other like rabid dogs. Rose and Nick saw Prince Antonius' actions with a comical expression. Eyes widened in shock and jaws dropped to the ground. Prince Antonius then turned to look at Nick and Rose and began to walk towards them. The couple stood still, watching the second prince walk closer to their form. The second prince finally stopped walking, standing a respectful distance away from them. Well, Prince Antonius began to say, I know you both have seen me before, but we hadn't been properly introduced. I am Prince Antonius, the second prince of the Solaris Kingdom. He greeted the couple. My name is Nielo Sloron, but I preferred to be called Nick, greeted Nick politely back. I know. I remember you from back there, said the second prince. By back there, he means during that whole fiasco with the king and first prince. Tony I know you. I am still the same Rose as before. I just told Nick who you are, Rose told Prince Antonius. But my name is Rose Marie Dale now, not Rosalind Mayers. She emphasized with a serious face. The second prince blinked at Rose nicknaming him without his consent. Also, they are talking to him casually instead of formally since he is a member of royalty. Surprisingly, he didn't feel any offense to that and didn't say anything to correct them. Tony huh? said the second prince thoughtfully. Oops my bad, didn't mean to butcher your name without a second thought. No, no, it's fine, I kind of like it. So Prince Antonius if you don't mind me asking. Rose tentatively asked awkwardly. Oh don't say it, I know what you're asking, you are wondering why I was hosting a puppet show in front of a bunch of kids, he correctly stated. Yes, Prince Antonius looked down and kicked a random pebble, his hands in his pants pockets. Well, it is because, I like it, he hesitantly answered her without looking up. Oh okay. Rose was surprised that a prince would enjoy this kind of activity. Nick stayed silent since he doesn't know the second prince like Rose. Prince Antonius suddenly walked past them. Let us talk somewhere else, he said over his shoulder as he walked ahead. Where is your bodyguard? Rose asked. I came here alone, the second prince replied back. Rose and Nick look at each other in uncertainty. Was he ever a problem to you? Nick suddenly asked her once the second prince is out of earshot. He was actually okay, Rose admitted after giving it a thought. Should we follow him? Why not? I am curious about what he wants, said Rose with a shrug. The duo followed after the second prince, Dash. Meanwhile hidden amongst the bushes at a good distance away from the trio. Why in the hell is my brother here? Said Prince William angrily, looking as the trio walk away. Shall we continue to follow them? Asked Tristan crouching beside the first prince. Prince William rolled his eyes. Obviously. Come on, what he wants to talk. The couple followed after the second prince of the Solaris Kingdom, Prince Antonius. The second prince lead the duo away from the crowd of market goers to a more private area. He spotted a tall tree providing a good amount of shade. He went over to the tree and planted his back to its trunk, sliding down to sit on the grass. He let out a sigh and closed his eyes. Nick and Rose stood near him, unsure about what the second prince wanted to talk to them about. For a moment, the second prince didn't say anything. Are you all right Prince Antonius? Rose asked in concern. Tony, he said. Huh? Just call me Tony like before, I don't mind. Rose was caught by surprise. So this prince wants her to nickname him, as if they were close friends. It would be thought that Rose and Prince Antonius were friends with the way they spoke to each other but the truth is, they barely interacted with each other in the past. Before Rose's inevitable demise in her old life, she and the second prince never had a true conversation with each other. They only greeted or say a few words to each other even when she visited the castle. Besides the royal butler Michael, Prince Antonius never demanded her death like the others, the Queen also. These second prince and the Queen, even if they never asked for her death, they have never tried to prevent it. Rose knows how Michael felt about her sentence, she doesn't know how Prince Antonius and his mother truly felt about it, so she doesn't know what to really feel about this backup prince. But at this moment, Rose decides to be on the offensive. No Prince Antonius the first won't. We were never close enough for me to call you that, Rose said with a scowl to the second prince harshly. Prince Antonius looked up to her in shock. I he cut himself off, feeling hesitant in what to say. Rose just continued to speak. Nick calmly standing by her side. We were never close enough to consider each other as friends. 
You have never tried to intervene in my case back then. So just say whatever you want to say and make it quick. Rose surprised even herself when she said this. Maybe I shouldn't have decided for us to follow him if I'm going to react that way, she thought. I'm sorry, Prince Antonius blurted out, abruptly standing up from where he sat on the grass. Where? Rose, and even Nick got caught off guard with the second prince's sudden outburst. Is he actually apologizing to me? Rose thought in shock. I'm sorry Rose. I'm sorry that I didn't say anything to stop your execution. I regretted my decision to keep my mouth shut. I thought following my father's word of law is the right thing to do as a prince, but I realized how wrong everything that has happened to you was. Prince Antonius admitted remorsefully. Seeing his guilt-ridden expression, Rose decided to talk to him more softly. Do you actually mean it? She said. Yes, I mean it. Back then, I was indifferent to how you were treated but deep inside myself, it felt so wrong. Like it was against the law of the divine. Divine intervention did got me to be reborn, thought Rose, remembering the god of rebirth that gave her a new chance at life. And I was such a weak prince that I was afraid to stand up for myself. By the gods, I still am, he emphasized. Rose and Nick continues to listen to the second prince silently. I am so spineless that I don't believe that I can ever take my brother's title as the crown prince of the Solaris kingdom. I don't even think I deserve the crown. Nor do I even want it. That is why I wanted to talk to you Rose. To apologize for everything that have happened to you, Prince Antonius finished. His tone indicating his regret. Note, I thought a lot of how I wanted this chapter to go. Now here it is. Hopefully it makes sense. If not, I can always go back to it. I just want this story to flow smoothly. Prince William's beliefs. So please, will you forgive me? Prince Antonius pleaded to the silent girl. I, ah. Uh, Rose ponders on how she should answer the, the second prince of the Solaris kingdom. Should I forgive him or not? Seeing her struggle to reply. Prince Antonius decided to answer for her, it's all right Rose, you don't have to forgive me, just know that I regret every inaction for not saving your life, he said gently, contrasting his expression of remorse. Just after he said that, a single teardrop escape escaped from the corner of his eye, which Rose notices. Sensing that Prince Antonius is truly genuine with his apology and feeling of remorse, Rose finally have her own answer to his question. She walked closer to the second prince's still form and clasped her hand on his shoulder, startling him in surprise. I forgive you Tony, she said with a smile. She finally called him by nickname. Nick watches their interaction silently, understanding that the second prince is trying to start building a friendship with Rose. There are other guys that would be bothered with their girlfriend's closeness to another male, but Nick at least is not blind to the situation. He trusts Rose. Why you do? Started the second prince. Yes. Rose nodded and dropped her hand from his shoulder. Prince Antonius gave a sigh of relief. Thank you Rose. How about you hang out with us? Rose suggested. Hang, out? Said the prince in confusion. I mean join us to have some fun in market day. It is the second day after all. You don't mind right Nick? She asked her boyfriend. Sure I don't mind, said Nick. He honestly rather have only the two of them enjoying their time together but hopefully this prince doesn't stick with them too long. Guess Rose needs a friend from this world. Great. So what do you say Tony? Okay. Prince Antonius replied with a bright smile. Dash meanwhile. I can't believe that Harlot is touching my useless brother. Does she have no common decency? He is royalty for crying out loud. Prince William said harshly from where he is crouched behind some bushes a distance away. I bet she is trying to seduce him. I always knew that she is a whore. Antonius is not even pushing her away. He must already be taken by her. Yes, it is quite improper for anyone to touch royalty without permission. Tristan agreed next to the prince. But I don't believe my sister is trying to seduce him. Her lover is close to them and is not even stopping her. Her so-called lover is a fool. He must be the type that enjoys being cuckolded, Prince William stated. But you're high I mean William. Aren't you just assuming? No, that male is definitely a spineless fool who lets his own lover do whatever she wants. He should be ashamed to be called a man. Tristan turned to look at the impressive form of Nick. He can see that the guy have muscles outlining through his shirt. His arms looks bigger than most of the men in the kingdom. Hell! That guy even have a few inches of height over the both of them, which Tristan envies. Even if this male called Sir Nicholas have no magic since he came from a world where magic doesn't exist, he would still have no trouble having women lining up for him. 
say, just curious but what makes a man my prince, especially concerning their lover? Tristan asked, eyes still on Nick, how could you not know what is obvious Tristan? The crown prince shook his head in disbelief, but very well, I'll tell you, a man must always be smart and strong, they should be the breadwinner and always be dominating, they should never show any weakness at all. They must have powerful magic concerning women. Men should possess these characteristics to show women their place no matter what. Men should never let their women get close to another man. Women should be gauged. Never be to be let outside unattended. Women should always be submissive to men and stay at home where they will be protected at all times and take care of the children. What about Lady Annelise? The kingdom needed her to save the people from the demon invasion with her light powers. She even had to be at the front lines. Asked Tristan, my allies, Prince William looks into space with a look of affection upon thinking of his future queen. My beloved Annelise, she is a bit of an exception. She is destined for greater things because she is blessed by the God of Light. She is smart and powerful, way above any other women in the world. She is special and is the only woman I deserve. Tristan looked at his friend weirdly. So at her future husband, would you let her do whatever she wants because she is blessed? Prince William gave a sudden laugh. Of course not, don't be silly Tristan. My allies will only have to do one task. Once her light powers return, she will only have to lift one little finger to wipe out all the demons. After that is over, I will definitely never let her leave the castle once we officially wed. She will never leave my side. Seeing Rose and the two males leave their spot by the tree together, Prince William abruptly gets up from his crouched position along with Tristan. Come on, they are on the move again. Hopefully I can catch my dim-witted brother alone so that I can get him to reveal his conversation with that witch. Worlds and gods. So about what you said before, do you truly not want to be the crown prince? Rose started as the trio walk together around the market. They walk side by side together with her in the middle. As usual, she and Nick held each other's hands. Prince Antonius nodded. Yes, I never wanted to be the crown prince at all. I don't feel I was ever suited for it. But if my older brother cannot take the handle, I would be forced to take over in his stead. I see, and that puppet show you did with the children, Rose trailed off a bit awkwardly. Oh that, that is just something for me to to do that I enjoy, I know that it is not proper of a prince to partake in that kind of activity. No it's fine. You shouldn't care what other thinks of you. You should do things that makes you happy, Rose exclaimed. Nick nodded, silently agreeing with her. The second prince paused from his trek, so Rose and Nick also stopped walking. Truthfully I already stopped caring long ago, and the people vice versa because I am just the spare on the royal line. That is why I can outwardly come out here without any chaperones. No one comes to bother me even if they see me, which is fine with me. So I am quite content right now, he said. Oh, okay. Well as long as he's happy. Rose thought. The trio began walking again. Then she spotted something at a distance. Oh look over there, is that a zoo over there? I think I see some animals. She pointed over at the direction, which the two males on her side looked towards. Looks like it. I also see some animals, Prince Antonius confirmed. Oh Nick this will be exciting. There will be animals that you will never see back on earth, Rose told her boyfriend. Really? So like dragons and unicorns will be at their zoo? Nick asked jokingly. Yes, Rose confirmed, making Nick lurched forward in shock. He turned to face her, his eyes wide and mouth gaping. Are you serious? He said. He didn't expect this world to have creatures that are considered myth on earth here. Yes Nick. Gaia is a literal fantasy world with all the cliché tropes. Whatever you can think of. This world likely have it. So elves and dwarves. Yes. They exist here too. Tim is going to be so jealous. Nick murmurs, knowing his younger brother is into that stuff. So I'm assuming the world you both came from doesn't have some creatures that are quite common in Gaia? The second prince piped up. Rose turned back to her now friend the second prince. Yes, Earth doesn't have dragons, unicorns, fairies, and many other creatures that exist here in Gaia. I see. Well please tell me more about the world you came from if you don't mind. It sounds like an interesting place despite being named after one of the magic elements. Prince Antinius asked. Rose Gafford at the last bit. Yeah when she found out that she was reborn in a world named Earth. It really surprised her that it is named after dirt. I'll tell you more about my home as we explore the zoo, she said. Prince Antonius was startled when Rose said Earth is her home. She must be a lot happier living on this world called Earth than she can ever be on Gaia. 
the Divine must have pitied her to reincarnate her in a different world, but why can't she be left alone in that world instead of of being summoned to fulfill some sort of prophecy, just what is going on, Prince Antonius thought in bewilderment, he knows that Anlise was the person of the prophecy to defeat the demon invasion since she was the saintess, then out of nowhere, her light powers disappeared. Then the oracle gave a second prophecy stating that an other worlder must be summoned to save the Solaris kingdom. No one, not even the oracle expects it to be Rose, the formerly dead Duke Meyer's daughter, but not his daughter anymore. So just what is going on? This is too complex, the second prince thought. There is no way that anyone in Gaia can know the answer to it. Not even the oracle knows what is going on. Never in the history of Gaia does a prophecy changed. So who would know why the prophecy has changed? One answer, the gods. In the world of Gaia there are multiple gods. Most likely the god of rebirth is the one who reincarnated Rose. But Rose is brought back unwillingly. With Rose and Nick chatting with each other in the background with her explaining about the creatures of Gaia, Prince Antonius tuned them out to figure out an answer to Rose's situation. Suddenly as it a light bulb is lit over his head, the second prince seems to have found his answer, it is so obvious. This is the most likely possibility is the god of prophecy, he most likely intervened and changed the oracle's visions, but why? The god of light was involved with Anlis. The god of rebirth was involved with Rose. The god of prophecy was involved with the oracle. What in the hell is going on with the divine? Gaia's World Zoo Part 1 The trio now stood at the entrance of the zoo. Rose saw a large painted sign at the top of the entranceway. It says, Gaia's World Zoo. Gaia's World Zoo. Sounds like there will be animals from all over the world in there. She said, all over the world. That makes me wonder about the geography of this world. Like how many countries and continents there are, said Nick. I don't remember how many countries there are but I know that Gaia has five continents. How about when we return to the mansion I'll show you a map of this world, Rose suggested. That will be cool. Nick agreed with his girlfriend. I believe there are about 70 countries in the world but I don't even remember most of the names, said Prince Antonius. We can think of that later. Let's just head inside. Right. The couple nodded and the trio began to head inside. Unbeknownst to them, two young men followed after them a good distance away. One of those men is clenching his fists so tightly that veins can be seen popping out. Once they went past the entranceway, the three widened their eyes at seeing so many people surrounding the zoo. Wow, there are so many people here, Rose said in surprise. I have never seen a zoo this crowded. It must be that they introduced some new animals to the public of the Solaris Kingdom, the second prince stated. Nick looks around the zoo curiously. Oh man, I really can't believe Rose said that actual dragons are here. Never would I have thought that I'd be able to meet a creature considered fictional back on Earth, he thought excitedly. Rose turned to her boyfriend. So babe, I know that you want to see the dragons first. What other animals do you want to see? She asked him. Well I actually want to see all the animals here, but some in particular like their griffins, unicorns, chimera, and hippogriff. He replied giddily, smiling so largely that he is showing his teeth. Rose chuckled at her boyfriend's expression. He is like a little kid at a toy store. What are we waiting for? We still have all day to enjoy ourselves. Dash. After squeezing through the crowds of people, the trio have finally found the dragon enclosure. No way. Nick was speechless upon seeing the dragons in the enclosure. Before him there are various dragons of different breeds. Dragons with different features, colors, and sizes. There are dragons that either have bat-like wings or a serpent-like, have horns or winglets, and spiky or leathery skin. There are even dragons with one or multiple heads. I can't believe this is real. And they all seem tamed. Nick mutters in disbelief, still staring at the legendary creatures of the fantasy genre. So it is true that Earth don't have dragons and other creatures we have, stated Prince Antonius standing next to the couple outside the enclosure. And yes, the dragons are tamed. Why does that surprise you? Back on Earth people thought that dragons as bloodthirsty and hostile creatures, although considered a myth. Nick answered the prince. Yes, there are even stories about heroes slaying dragons, Rose added. Then she turned to Nick. But in Gaia. The dragons here act like regular predators of the animal kingdom. Like how some predators can become tamed and be docile if they like you, she told him. That is interesting to know. So what kind of dragons do they have here? From what I see, 
There are the regular dragons, Y ones, dragonets, drakes, hydras, rim, and basilisks. There are many other breeds of dragons in Gaia, said Prince Antonius. Suddenly, a zookeeper appears before the three and the crowds of excited people behind them. Listen up, everyone. For 1,000 votes per person, you can ride a dragon. Only two people can ride a dragon at the same time, said the zookeeper, making everyone murmur excitedly. What? Anyone can ride a dragon? Nick exclaimed in shock. Oh my gosh, Nick. We both should ride one. I have never ridden one before. It would be an experience of a lifetime, Rose said excitedly. Wait, you never rode a dragon, Rose? But you either do the second prince started to say but suddenly remembers from that time at the throne room. Rose turned and gave him a glare. Don't say it, she said curtly. Prince Antonius quickly nodded, a bit scared of her. Babe, what do you think? Do you want to ride with me? She asked once she turned back to her boyfriend. Yes, I would love to. Nick replies with a grin. Great. Rose then gasped, suddenly remembering something. My phone, thanks to Turner. It was fully charged yesterday, but now, the battery is currently on 75%. How could I forget about taking pictures or videos? Rose felt like smacking herself on the head until another thought occurred. Wait, Prince Antonius is here with us. If I take my phone out, he might see it. Should I try to distract him from seeing my phone? Or maybe, do I trust him enough to know about one of the technologies of Earth? Rose's expression became unsure. Note, do you want Prince Antonius to know about their phones or not? A, yes. B, no. Informational chapter. Geography. Note, all names are made up except Gaia because that is a common fantasy world name. Might change or update it. World, Gaia. Five known continents. Illyria, Ruxus, Marcos, Ying, Healthy Ear. Forbidden Zone. 70 countries. Illyria, 10, Solaris, Ignia, Printera, Dianaries, Lunaries, Quentero, Belfaria, Kinmeria, Zumaro, Gypheria, Ruxus, 13, Luxus, Onderin. Umas, Marstana, Bruistan, Yastana, Xixis, Lumos, Traxus, Histana, Eblis, Thinastan, Cumos, Marcos, 16, Rocos, Zarcos, Thyton, Euphine, Melfine, Witton, Priton, Farcos, Helfine, Alfine, Riton, Xiton, Gyphine, Xarcos, Velfine, Narcos, Ying, 17, Xian, Sun, Chian, Keen, Shemain, Ling, Xing, Ichin, Ilian, Goromain, Akakawa, Himanezawa, Gang A, Kang A, Lian, Zing, Jing, Healthy Ear, 14, Luffy Ear, Gumia, Virilium, Maschador, Velfi Ear, Estador, Proterium, Kyberium, Stachador, Willy Ear, Chilium, Prithium, Corithium, Rador, Forbidden Zone, unmapped and the most dangerous parts of Gaia. Many sailors never returned once they enter it. Only a handful of people in the history of Gaia made it out to tell their tale of their experiences. On Gaia's world map, there is a line that marks the Forbidden Zone. Unknown how many continents or nations. Largest to smallest of the five known continents. Ying, Helfa, Illyria, Marcos, Ruxus. What kind of world is Gaia? Medieval fantasy world. What is the technology level? Most of this world depends on magic so scientific innovations is behind that of Earth. The world is closer to Renaissance level technology like navigation, mechanical clock, compass, and eyeglasses. Note, Rose does not hate the entire world of Gaia. She hates the Solaris Kingdom specifically, but she doesn't want to live her life in Gaia ever again.